young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Hey guys, today's podcast is sponsored by Bobcat Company. Check them out at bobcat.com. Welcome everybody back here once again to the Justin Moore podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in with us today. I'm your old buddy, old pal, JR the Handler, and that's the one and only Justin Cole Moore, the singing Arkansas Razorback. How are you, JM? I'm good. We're back uh, after <laughs> yes. uh, Turkey Week. Uh, we are back live and in action. Good to be back with you. Hopefully, everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we did. You and I have purposely not talked about our Thanksgiving so that we can talk about it here. Yep. Uh, I know you traveled a little bit. Uh, we will get into that today, uh, get into some uh, football talk because, I mean, this is the time. Uh, if your team is, well, if you're JR's team, you're still in <laughs> the your hunt team's for a national. If your team's you're, red, you're doing pretty good. Still in the hunt for a national championship, and uh, so we'll get into that kind of stuff and um, the games the past week or so, and then, um, you know, what's what's coming up. And we are also going to have um, a fellow Arkansan, fellow Razorback uh, on here shortly, uh, Shay Mooney from Dan and Shay. Yes. He and I, um, we'll get into it more, but he and I uh, – we're in the same area that this this past weekend we were both at the Razorback game and he was back in town and uh, for the first time from what I understand a long time and uh, we didn't have a chance to connect in person but uh, I gifted him some tickets to the game and I, hopefully he had a good time so we'll catch up oh. I thought it'd be a good time to catch up with him he's yeah. a big Razorback fan and uh, I think he got to go to a football game, got to go to the basketball game. So we'll catch up with him and uh, see what he's been up to, uh, other than women are winning Grammy after Grammy after yeah, right. Grammy. But, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. Be good to catch up with Shay. He's a great guy. Yeah, I'm sure he did have a good time if he was at the Arkansas game. Uh, congrats yeah. on that, man. That's awesome, guys. Going bowling, baby. How good is it? I know you're 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 holding it back because you're pretty calm, cool, and collective on most fronts all the time. <laughs> but I know you inside. You are there's fireworks going off inside you. You are so pumped that your team is back. You're you're yeah. just like so. Anybody want to talk about football? Uh, yeah, well, it's, <laughs> it's so. What's so odd about it and awesome about it is like, and you know this because you're kind of a historian also um, about, you know, football in particular in the SEC. And I mean, my entire life outside of the last like nine, 10 years, um, you know, we're not Alabama, but we're really competitive. Oh, we're yeah. We're usually good. We're average to above average. We'll slip up, win 10, 11 games here oh, yeah. and there. But, you know, usually the floor is six, seven wins, and then – Yeah. And it's you guys just, just been, had a bad run. I mean, it, you got, I mean that's run, just a one bad little hires. Pull, in, in your whole history of your program, one little, like you said, eight, nine years. So, I, I'm just knowing yeah. you. You're like, all right, back to normal. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, woo. You know, it's like because you've been you've almost you've been like kind of choke breathing for a year. You're like, uh, is, we're going, uh, we're almost. Uh, 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 uh. You're just like, yes, yeah. okay, just back to normal. Just want to be in the hunt. Just want to know that yeah. we got a shot every year, playing the right way. I mean, you guys yeah. scooped up all of your rivals this year. Yep. Your old rivals, your new rivals. I mean, y'all cleaned up. I love it. I love it. Yeah, and we'll get into this with Shay, but I mean, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, like there was so much parity this year in the SEC and college football as a whole. I. It was a lot of fun for for us, but I do a weekly segment on the the radio station here that's you know covers the Razorbacks and the one I did to this week. I just said, quite honestly, this year's been so much fun, but I'm glad it's over. It's like the monkey's been taken off our back. Yeah, like all right, we're back to eight and four. It's like a relief. It's yeah. just like okay, thank God, yeah. finally a good year. Yeah, and maybe we can build on this and. So, um, I, I, I saw a thing, read a, an article the other day that said that we had, we've been in the league now for 30 years, I believe. I believe it was 92, 92. when we came into the league. Yep. Us in South Carolina, same year. And so, this would be 30 years. We have had, I believe, six nine-plus win seasons in 30 years. 
So it really tells you how special this year was for us because we got a chance to get to nine wins for only the seventh time in 30 years. <laughs> I mean, wow. so, you know, it kind of tells you the job that Sam's done, which I talked to Sam earlier today. Um, he's he's pretty pretty jacked up. He just had him so, a birthday too, didn't he, a couple days ago? Just turned 60. Just turned 60. So we'll talk to we'll talk to Shay, see if he got a chance to meet Coach. And I know he met Coach Muss. Um and so yeah, it'll be fun. So yeah, this gonna uh, be a good episode. To, for, yeah, I'm for pumped, man. We sure. I know we've talked to uh, Shay for a while. Um, I know we saw him at the golf at Tracy's golf tournament in Nashville mm-hmm. earlier in the year. We talked about it. I know la- hell last year. I remember we talked to him about it and just you, like I tell people because people hit us up all the time wanting to have you know different entertainers and stuff on here. And I'm well, as much as we love to, and I'm sure they love to. I mean, it's just a lot of moving parts with schedules and stuff, and you know, timing, and then now all of us are married and got kids and responsibilities and stuff. Yep. It's not like we're all you know just hanging out the treehouse and just ready to <laughs> chop it up. So it's good to finally get him locked down. Like you said, man, they've had a killer run since they got rocking a couple yeah i guess seven years ago or so now and uh yeah good good dudes and glad to have him yeah. finally on the show and uh yeah thanksgiving i'm i'm sitting over here my my chair's uh getting its uh workout in today it's getting its, <laughs> i'm getting my money's worth out of because it. it's hard holding this big boy up today i ate and ate i feel like that's all i've done just i've just ate 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 i don't know if you're like this but or if you guys out there listening are like this but I love Thanksgiving food, all of it. The dressing, yes. the green bean casserole, the, the whole – everything. I yep. mean, literally everything. And I eat the leftovers basically till they're gone. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my kids and my wife are, you know, a couple of days after they're tired of it. But, you know, we're recording this on Tuesday, um, and I still haven't stopped eating our leftovers. I finally polished off the rest of the dressing. <laughs> yesterday but they're like dad i'm so sick of leftovers kate's like i'm not eating it anymore i'm like it's great stuff i'm gonna continue to eat it like what, yeah what's let's wrong go get y'all yeah let's go get chicken fingers and we've got this in there yeah yeah no. home cooking yeah no, i'm like you and yeah so, i'm eating it till it's gone i've got yeah we've picked through it sharice actually froze some stuff i had the i go. had the combo this year because her family came here they cooked a spread, which is not like the spread you and I grew up, which was right. interesting The full because this year not being um, in home or when everybody else brings dishes, it was just what they cooked instead of having some extra influences outside of our, you know, extent, or her, from her extended family. It was just her and her mom basically cooking and her sister brought some stuff. Um, but, dude, we had gumbo, chicken and sausage gumbo, potato salad, of course, rice, which got to have rice to everything, uh, rice dressing, which is like dirty rice. Uh, corn that. pudding we had that uh, uh mac and cheese universal is what i've learned and you know that's my one of my least favorite things yeah. to eat i'm like i why? know which is I, I don't know anybody that don't like mac and cheese but you because it's so easy you can have it any time it's literally pasta and cheese i mean it ain't nothing it's fantastic to it. though yeah you get me collard greens or mac and cheese i'll throw them in a ditch i promise <laughs> you anyway uh so we had that what else uh, a few other goodies but it wasn't any of the stuff that we're used to there was yeah. no None of that's just how they eat because they're from South Louisiana. It's a whole different thing. I mentioned it. I just, you know, they were going to have peas. Or mom forgot the peas. That was the only thing, you know. Uh, we had uh, we had another, maybe had smothered corn too. But anyway, it was all fantastic. You know, it was amazing. And I, I'm still working on. I had a bowl of gumbo last night. You know, and I'm going to. There's one more. I'm going to pick through the the because they the bones are still in. I'm going to pick through the bones and eat it. Exactly. Hey, yep. what's up, South Man? Hey, so, for those watching, you'll see uh, hey, my bud. son here. For those who are just listening, um, South's hanging out with me today while Mom's getting groceries, and um, Jr. said hi. Hey, bud. Say hey, Jr. Hey, Jr. So, uh, the last episode, you guys had to deal with my ridiculous cough, and I, again, I apologize, but that finally, I don't know, five, six days after we recorded that four or five days after we recorded that it went away i was never sick i never had a sore throat nothing just had a ridiculous cough and sorry you guys had to deal with that you're going to deal with uh, a little more noise today out there listening because as much as i have uh, explained to my four-year-old son that he has got to be quiet during this uh i highly doubt that that's gonna uh be the case uh but that's all good a little uh real life here for you y'all want to do behind the scenes uh stuff and you know sometimes uh it's just me with my kiddos so what you need bud 
Hey, buddy. Need something? May I ask you something? Yeah, you can ask me something. What? Hey, Daddy. What? When he gets out working, can you bring me the dog and you give me a toy? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> if you're good and quiet. Deal? Yeah. Deal. At, okay. And for everybody out there, his favorite thing on earth <laughs> is to go to Dollar General and get a toy. I, I hear that every time I go to your house. He's, if he's crying, <laughs> it's because he can't go to Dollar General. If he's happy, it's because he's about to go to Dollar General. Yeah, if, if I, I, that was probably pretty well understood. But if you guys didn't understand that out there listening – he said, when I get done working, uh, can I take him to Dollar General and get him a toy? He's obsessed, as JR put it. So, yeah, I guess we may have to make a run to Dollar General. And he's I watching mean, some dinosaur movie. If y'all hear dinosaurs in the background. I, I <laughs> but it. anyway, so. Uh, Shay, I know he he we were going to do this a little earlier, and he had to go get his kid from school. So he gets it. He oh, gets yeah. it, too. So. But uh, oh yeah, but yeah, we had the uh, we had the combo for for Thanksgiving as well. Uh, we'll get into that more after we have Shay on. I don't know, Jr. You want to take a quick break for yeah. our sponsors and then get yeah. Shay on and, and talk to him for a minute. Yeah, let's do that. And also, I want to put on everybody's radar um, that we announced some dates. As y'all know, we're going to be rocking again next year too. We've only got uh, another month left um, as this airs. We'll have we'll be down to uh, you know a month. It's almost Christmas, and then. 2022 will be here we're going to be out back rocking on the road so i know uh when this airs today there will be two shows announced um today as this airs uh that you get a pre-sale code to if you're in the area if you're out in arizona we got two shows booked uh they are going to be i want to mess this up tucson march 12th that's uh that's the date uh we'll be in tucson arizona on march 12th uh, there is a promo code for the fan club presale. The press, the passcode is more twenty two, more twenty two, all capital. That is the promo code for the presale for the March twelfth show uh, in Tucson, uh, and then on the thirteenth we'll be in Prescott Valley, Arizona, uh, and also there the <coughs> presale code is more twenty two. Also, so. Uh, that's the 12th and 13th of March. We're going to be out in Arizona. So if you're in that area or close enough or want to take a trip, come see us. Today, this will be the code you can use to get the pre-sale on that. So use it. And also use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast when you interact with us on social media. I'm JR the Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore. Look for the blue check mark by JM's name. We appreciate y'all dropping in with us every week. Thank you. Spread the word. Leave us those reviews, five stars, all that fun stuff. We'll be right back here shortly on the Justin Moore Podcast. I want to give a quick shout out to Bobcat Company, who really does make a job, any job that is, easier. They got everything from skid steers to compact tractors, utility vehicles, zero turn mowers, and everything in between. Their products are designed to make your lives easier. I like that. Which means spending more time with your family and doing the other fun things you love. Y'all know how big of a deal that is to me. Make sure you visit bobcat.com to see what products might be a good fit for your property. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. And Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy. And uh, see what we got to offer. ShopThisLittlePiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour Jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait, Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great. 
inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an Academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, or you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. We're <laughs> dialing in here on the Zoom machine now. Our other Arkansas brother. We can see him. Oh, there we go. Oh, there it is. That golden voice. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, everybody. It's officially Christmas, and we've officially got Shay Mooney on the fo- podcast. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic, man. How are you guys doing? Y'all have a lot cooler of a background than I do. Look at this thing, man. <laughs> I, got a white, I got a white wall. The, <laughs> I, are, the, the kids aren't screaming in, so. Well, mine are. I was going to tell you. So, I told you mine have been sick. Well, all last week they were sick. It was like one a day drop, dropping like flies, man. We went to the doctor, I think, three different times or some stupid something. But you get it. I mean. It's the worst, but, uh, man. Kids just seem to, to find ways to get sick. Just things how, I never How old of. are yours? I have a four-year-old and a one-year or a two-year-old or almost two years old. In February and January, they're going to be five and two. So I don't really okay. know dates right now, to be honest with you. It's been a year and a half of just a, a blackout, really. Yeah, I don't no remember sleep. what's happening. No sleep. Um, you know, it's yeah. just been crazy, man. Yeah, it's a uh, so mine are. Uh, I have three daughters that are eleven, nine, and no, excuse me, eleven, ten, and seven, almost twelve, ten, and seven. And then my little boy's four, and you'll see and hear from him because my <laughs> wife went to get groceries. I told her I was doing this. I said, I mean, he can stay if he has to, but I mean, it's not ideal. And she just took off, and here he is with me. So. <laughs> We can't yeah, blame them too much but when we get mad at that kind of stuff. It's like, how dare you leave me? And you're like, well, you've been doing this for the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah, to me. Right. You know, hey, listen, <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not like we ask either, you know, we no got a show and we're gone. Yeah, no doubt about it. So just so you know what the hell you're doing, Shay, when um, I think we talked about this in person, but when COVID or the C word shut us down, I don't know if they'll black that out, but um, <laughs> when they shut us down, I was trying to think of any way to like stay connected, do something. I was bored to tears as I'm sure you were. And so we said, hell, let's try this. And if anybody likes it, great. And if they don't, that's fine too. And so it's been fun, man. We've had a ton of our artist buddies on pro athletes, et cetera, et cetera. So thanks for, for taking a little time with us. I just thought it'd be a great time to bring you on. Cause you and I just both got to go see the Razorbacks play football. Um, and, and I believe you said that was the first game you'd been to in a while. And then I saw you on TV calling the Hogs for the basketball game. I didn't get to stay for the basketball game. Uh, I didn't even know that was on TV. But, that that made me very nervous. And they threw that at me pretty <laughs> last minute. I was, I was sitting down and uh, some friends of ours gave us some tickets. And so we're sitting there courtside, which I've never done ever at a Razorback basketball game. Yeah. I'm always up in the nosebleeds. And uh, this guy comes over to me, and he's got this headset, and he's like, hey, bud, they talked to you about calling the hogs. And I was like, what was that in the, <laughs> right here in the, in the seats? You know, and I thought, well, I'll stand up, you know, and I'll, I'll do the call. Well, then he comes over about three minutes later, and he's like, all right, buddy, you ready? And there's like, you know, 10 cheerleaders, and they push me out to the middle of the yeah, you're floor. On. I'm just like, I'm like, oh, all right. And it's, <laughs> it's things like that, you know, in your, in your hometown. And you just, for whatever reason, it makes you – way more nervous than you would be yeah. if you were just out playing to thousands of people that you don't know. It's always right. like your family's watching and they're kind of, they're probably looking at you like, you know, Judging. he probably didn't do as good as he could have, you know, we were <laughs> right. proud of you, but you know, you didn't keep up the pace. I didn't know how fast to do it because you're looking around <laughs> and you're like, I don't know, 
you know, it's nerve wracking. It's like singing the national yeah. anthem. You know, everybody knows the words until you try to sing it. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, exactly. shoot, I thought I knew this. Now I'm, now I'm a little nervous. Yeah. But it was a blast though, yeah. being out there, man. Thank you for the tickets, by the way. That's how I got yeah, to go buddy. to the game was you gave me and the family tickets. So I appreciate that. Yeah, you bet, man. Anytime. I, I, I always take the – I'm of the uh, notion that I'd rather somebody sit there than nobody sit there and make it louder <laughs> in the stadium. And we uh, – for the football game, uh, it took them a while to get going, but we finally finally got it got it rolling there. A, a got it rolling, bit. man. And, it's pretty exciting to watch, man. This is the first time I feel like in a lot of years that – I think every sport in the program is having growth and having success, which I don't think we've had that in a really long time. You know, you have one sport that'll kind of have a moment and, but it just feels like the whole program is, you know, and I probably credit that to, to your check and Hunter's doing a great job. I feel like with the hires and everything, it's pretty exciting to be a, a Razorback fan right now. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Hunter's done a great job, man. I mean, he, um, he really, unlike the last guy who I knew also, uh he was a different cat um but he did did some good things but he 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 didn't really weave himself into the fabric of the state of arkansas quite yeah. like hunter's done hunter gets it he gets what the razorback means he he gets the state of arkansas and he's done a great job and made some unbelievable hires i mean you look at you know muss and Pittman alone let alone some of the other sports that people pay a little less attention to that are thriving now because of him. Um, he's done a great job. Great job. So we're, we're is, lucky to have him. And he's a great I, human being. He is He is a really great guy. And it was. Uh, I hope no one says that about me when one day. We're like, you know, he did some great things. <laughs> it just stops at night. <laughs> Horrible human. Horrible human. You know, he's a bad guy. No, but, you know, no. he's a uh, – one of these days, I hope, I, I hope I don't get that for me. That you're gonna be on the you're gonna be on the podcast you. next next week. Like you know, he's done some great things, but this <laughs> podcast if. was not one of them. He did not do good. As not, if, you know. hey, what we a, got a real so, low bar here, Shay. Yeah. Real low bar yeah, yeah, here, exactly. brother. I promise you. That's I feel this. Is, I feel comfortable coming on here because you know this is. I feel like we're all figuring it out. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. We're gonna yeah. figure it out. But yeah, I've been watching man. I watched the podcast and it's uh it's really really good, man. I I jump on there and you know when you're kind of in a hurry and you. You get in a rabbit hole. I yeah. watched. That's always how I usually watch your podcast is, is on uh, <laughs> recorded like, you know, Instagram clips, and I'm just that's how I watch it. It's unbelievable. Man, you got to find a better rabbit hole than this one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If you're all the way down this rabbit one. hole, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're way, in trouble, you're man. That sounds like a 3 a.m. rabbit hole when you can't go to sleep <laughs> or something. Yeah, when you're watching but, like the world's longest, uh, you know, pole jumps. Yeah, I know I've really <laughs> lost it. On the right. bus and just like I've never even watched this sport before. There's there's times yeah. I always watch and this you probably have discovered this on the bus. I always kind of sit outside the bus and you know you got the TV out there, and it was uh it was probably 1 a.m. and we're waiting for you know the bus driver to get back and it was kind of we were about to head back home and I found myself for two and a half hours watching the tractor pull. <laughs> it's always on. <laughs> I don't even know where it comes from. I don't even know where it is. It, it might or what channel it's on or what channel it's on. It just always shows up. In my Apple TV yeah. kind of little suggestion box, which they're like, we think we know this guy. He's going to love <laughs> this tractor yeah. pull. If that it's don't scream be... Arkansas, I don't know what does. <laughs> it does. Like, get... And then they were right, which was the saddest part, you know, where they're like, no, he, I did watch it. <laughs> yeah. Two and a half hours I watched <laughs> right. it. I know, all, I know all the drivers now. I'm a big fan. <laughs> yes. That's a, hey, so you grew up where in Arkansas specifically? I know it was up that direction. You're not down uh, south like, like myself. You're from – up that way right yeah well i'm up i'm toward kind of right in the middle of fort smith and fayetteville so it's called okay. natural dam arkansas i'm sure you've heard of it it's a very famous town <laughs> five, five, hey it is now people. it is now dude natural dam yeah. Shay Mooney. 511 people in in my town and it's uh I, i've never seen 500 people in the town but that's what they tell <laughs> i don't know who made the census i don't know who they're counting if they're counting cattle as well because that makes right. a little more sense you know but it was yeah. a great place to be from, man. It's, uh, you know, like, you know, being from kind of small town Arkansas, when you get out and you start traveling the world a little bit, you realize how, you know, there's some cool places to go and visit, but there's no better place than, you know, being from a small town, in my opinion. And it just going yeah. back home is like a big breath of fresh air, of, you know, kind of gets your 
your bearings going again. And you, you live there now, which I'm very jealous of. Cause I would yeah. eventually like to be, you know, back in, back in Arkansas and have at least, you know, travel back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, I, I've told this story on here, but I, 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 I talked for a long time about doing it and I lived in Nashville for almost 10 years. And I, once I had a little bit of success, I kept talking about doing it. And of course the labels going, no, that's no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Well, finally I had this conversation with my manager right after I had my first daughter, which again now is almost 12 years ago. And he goes, Justin, you're a grown man. You don't have to ask anybody's permission where you can live. Just go home. <laughs> two weeks later, I was in Arkansas. So That's two incredible. years at two years after that, I'm having a conversation with our label president, <laughs> and uh, he goes, uh, "We do, do we share a label?" I'm on, I'm on I'm on Warner. I think are you on? Okay, are you still now, on, is it Valerie? Is that where you? Yeah, on? I was for some reason I was thinking we were on the same label group for a time. Maybe I'm mistaken. I might be mistaken um, as well. I don't I don't but, know much, Justin. I don't yeah, know much. I, yeah, <laughs> I hear you. But anyway, he calls me and we're BSing about a single or something. I don't know what it was, some business something. And it just out of the blue he goes, Oh, by the way, how long have you been living back in Arkansas? I said, Ah, about two years now. <laughs> he goes, Well, I guess you were right. It really didn't make a difference. I said, like, "Well, yeah, I guess not." So he just he just he just had just found it out after two years later. Yeah, That's yeah. <laughs> so my suggestion to you would be if you if you decide to do that, just don't tell nobody. Just do it. Yeah. That's just run away. This yeah. is probably, yeah, run this is probably my epiphany. I, this is my epiphany of uh, of the advice <laughs> that I'm getting. Yep. It is funny exactly. when, when someone tells you, you know, it's like, "Hey, you, you remember that you're a grown man," and especially when you start so young, and you know, yeah. I'm sure you know, we all started doing this a long time ago and you kind of grow up in that of kind of the hierarchy of, all right, we got to kind of do this and do things the proper way. And here I am 29 year old, you know, married man with kids. And I'm still like, is it, do you think it would be okay if I went on like a vacation? Do I need to, like, <laughs> who right. do I need yeah. to ask? Like, who's the boss? Like, yeah, and know. not to men and not to mention, and I'm not just saying this, this is a fact, like you were, uh, you were way way bigger than i've ever been in my career so like you can you can literally tell people to f off that's well, not that, in your nature because you're too nice a guy i it know it could have been because i followed the line you know what i mean <laughs> you would be you know how huge you'd be if you just you know listen to people <laughs> my goodness yeah this is how i, I could have you know, won some of sacrifice. those grammys maybe that you've won that's all but it i takes, only dude. followed the rules it's that and they and i read that once in a book uh that i that i wrote uh of just follow the rules uh you know i didn't write a book but and i have never heard that but <laughs> when, when you do you so will far. and that will be in the book when <laughs> no, i do it will be in the book somewhere. no that's because you're honestly man you're too humble to say this but you're a super super talent you and dan both no obviously. doubt thank you man. Uh, no doubt yeah, yeah i was i was thinking really, earlier, really it happy like, for you buddy yeah, oh, yeah, I, I was thinking that. earlier, it was like, we. I remember meeting you guys right when you guys uh, first kicked off in Nashville, I guess probably 12, 13, when you guys first were kicking around Nashville. And I remember, remember meeting you guys, super cool, all that stuff. And it seemed like, boom, it wasn't a year or two later, you guys were just rocking along. And then every time I saw y'all, y'all were just moving up the, the lineup at a festival. The next thing you know, you guys are... <laughs> Y'all are playing the garden. I mean, y'all are y'all are killing it, man. And uh, I I know because I've kept up with you guys all these years, but I know some of the listeners out here may or may not know. Uh, and I think it'd be cool to hear these backstories. Somebody coming from a town of five hundred people in Central Arkansas. I mean, they always ask, "How do you even get into this business? What was the path of a young Shay to get to Nashville, sitting there yeah. with a bear with a blank wall behind him, where could be all of his Grammys and, and awards?" But We'll leave it blank for now. Yeah. Following, <laughs> following the line, where did the line take you from Natural Dam, Arkansas, to uh, to Madison Square Garden? You know, <clears throat> that's a great question, Jr. I'll tell you. <laughs> you know, when I sit down to think about these things, and you know, you do interviews, and there is sometimes when I when I think about it, and I'm like, how did I get here, dude? Because sometimes you just kind of have no idea of, you know, you wake up one day and you've just been touring all of a sudden for this. We're coming up on, you know, this will be our ninth year on December seventh, and we'll. That's that's uh, Dan and I met nine years ago, which is just kind of crazy for me to think about. You you start this thing and you're mm -hmm. the youngest, and then you're not all of a sudden, you know. And it's yeah. uh, it's kind of crazy being that the new new kids in town, and then you you wake up one day and you know you're all of a sudden the veterans. And people are like, man, you know, we just would love to have a career like you had. And they it's use crazy, had right? sometimes. They say had. It was like, well, we're still doing it, dude. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> yeah. but it's uh you know i started uh i grew up in church and i you know we had a little church grandview assembly was where i went to church down in natural lamb and i just started doing you know what we would call specials they'd be like you know the the moonies are going to get up and do a special today you know and that was just us coming up and yep. doing the same song we did every week you know and it kind of became you know us three we would travel around and my parents were always really supportive and I'm very thankful for that. And my dad, there's not a, a better, you know, mom and dad that I could have had growing up. And they were very, very supportive of the the music thing for me. And we always would, we came to Nashville when I was probably, you know, seven or eight. It was like the first time that we came and recorded a gospel album with my sisters. And we would just travel around to different churches and, you know, I was cutting my chops and learning how to sing harmonies. And, you know, that was one thing I was kind of thankful for of, you know, having two sisters that sang is we were always singing. And my whole family sang. If you didn't sing, it was a little weird. Like, you know, hey, we'll be praying for you, you know, that you don't play an instrument <laughs> or something. And uh, it was my, you know, my grand, my grandparents, everybody did something, whether it was mandolin or, you know, picking the guitar, and just kind of anything. Everybody did something and, you know, played piano. And growing up in that environment, it was, uh, I just fell in love with it. You know, it was just one of those things where for me going to school, I, I hated school so much. And I, I know my dad, when I was younger, was probably like, I just don't know about his work ethic. You know, he's, probably, he's not doing that great in school. You know, he ain't going to be a doctor. You know, I'll tell you that. And uh, But one of my one of my dad's friends one day, he was kind of talking and I was doing construction like my whole life. That's what my dad has a construction company in Arkansas. And so one day my dad was like, I'm just worried about him, man. He just doesn't seem to be interested in this. And he was like, well, how many hours a day does he spend playing the drums? How many hours does he spend, you know, doing this and that? And he was like, well, that's the problem. That's all he does. And he was like, well, there's, there's your answer. You know, that was, it wasn't my work ethic. I just couldn't, if I wasn't doing something that I loved, then I just, I couldn't really put any effort into it, which is probably not a good quality. If, you know, for some reason this didn't work out for me, I don't know where I'd be, but it was just, you know, for me, it was never an option to do anything else. And I think that's something that all of us, as musicians and artists kind of have as you know anyone who's had any, any success just knows that it has to be that reckless abandon of I, I don't have anything else and i would rather be a broke homeless singer on the street than to you know do anything else and i think you kind of have to have yeah. that if you know no matter where you're at in your career i think we all kind of have that in common of this is just uh, you know i don't i couldn't see myself doing anything else and you know when i started when i got out of high school uh, i had a band in high school and and we would just kind of, you know, do local shows and, you know, you're carrying your, your own, your own gear in and out of trailers into these places, spending three hours setting up for, you know, what ends up being like 15 people, you know, and you're like, yeah. you know, you kind of put in 14 of them don't care. It. 14 of them don't care. Four, <laughs> 10 of them you're related to, you know, on my, on yeah, most exactly. tours, you know, and I was like, you know, getting out of that <laughs> though and getting out of high school. And I, I moved up to Pittsburgh for a little while, which is kind of crazy. Cause I lived probably, you know, five minutes away from where Dan grew up. He didn't live there at the time, but I'm sure, you know, he came back for holidays and I was there for about a year. And so I know that we probably, you know, were close at some points and never met there. What the in hell Pittsburgh. was in Pittsburgh? It was crazy. Well, my sister went up there for school and I decided, well, what the heck, I'm not going to go to college. So I'm going to go do this. So I went to nine month ministry school at this church. And, uh, you know, I was so bad at school as I didn't even get, I didn't even finish that. <laughs> I got, I got like, couldn't even I go to school the, for the Jesus. Program. No, couldn't even do it. <laughs> but I, I finished the program, but I never, like at the end of it, I could have gotten like my, you know, my minister, my minister's license basically could have done weddings, could have sang them and, and done them. You know what I mean? That would have been the, the combo I needed, but I did, I never did all the paperwork that it took. So maybe one of these days I'll go back and finish that. <laughs> But uh, after that, man, I, I got back to Arkansas and I had this moment where I didn't really know what was going on because I just kind of figured and this was kind of my uh, naive attitude probably of, I don't know, you know, what do I do now? I thought I would have done something by now, you know, and I ended up, long story short, I met uh, T-Pain, like the rapper T-Pain and he, uh, he signed me, he loved country music and wanted to kind of, and I wrote a whole bunch of stuff because, you know, when you're from a small town, you don't. It's like, oh, what'd you grow up on? You're like, literally everything. You know, we listen to everything. And he was like, you know, I love country music and, you know, I want to, you know, give you a shot. And long story short, I was in Atlanta for a while and then started coming to Nashville. Uh, after all that, nothing really happened. And, and I just started writing in Nashville and I met Dan in 2012 at a house party because I was so broke that when I heard someone had a keg, I was in. I didn't even ask where it was. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's like, is it three hours away? I'll be there. Right. Me, you know? And so I, I met him right there at that house party and 
we ended up riding the very next day I probably you know seven we stayed up till 3 a.m just kind of playing the guitar and singing we just hit it off and we wrote the next day and the first song that we wrote got put on hold for rascal flats and we were just like well first off we made it uh i never got right. to work again but i didn't know <laughs> right. how where's the bus yet. you know yeah we uh we got yeah. we got a hold uh, and it was a uh, you know when you get a hold not many people outside of the music industry know that it literally means nothing you know it means that they heard it and they probably mm. listened to they probably put you know 12 songs on hold that day but we just thought like well we this is it you know now and we were just excited that they had heard us we were like they were we're basically famous this is how it works <laughs> and uh so we, we wrote two songs that day and we just never stopped man and it was like a for whatever reason you know we had both been doing this forever obviously trying to you know make a name for ourselves and doing it kind of separately. And, and, uh, when I met Dan, the first song that we, you know, the first songs we started writing, it just clicked. And for whatever reason, it was a fast track. And man, it was like, we wrote probably 300 songs in the first like six months. And we were writing every wow. day, mainly because we were too broke to leave like our houses and go anywhere. So we yeah. just set wrote songs, you know, and, uh, it was amazing, man. It was, I've never seen anybody work harder than Dan. And I, I that was what, I was, I've always been impressed with, and if he couldn't do it, then he would learn how to do it. And he got prolific on pro tools, you know, after he would just sit there and make beats every single day. And it was pretty, you know, amazing to watch that. And he made me a lot better of a songwriter, you know, when we kind of got together and we just started kind of making this, this magic together of, you know, what the Dan and Shay sound was. And, you know, it was a, uh, it was a crazy journey because, you know, going into it and I grew up, you know, listening to, you know, I loved old country and I loved all this stuff, but we weren't that, you know what I mean? When I, if I'm, I knew that I would never be singing, you know, the songs that you, that you came up singing, like I wasn't going to do, you know, he can't even bait a hook was probably not going right. to be our first single, you know? And I was like, cause if I start, <laughs> if I sing that, I got too high of a voice, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be singing about, you know, too many of those things. And we had to find kind of our own lane. And right then kind of the time that it happened, it just, we kind of cut that own lane and never, apologize for being who we wanted to be we didn't try to chase you know anything else that you know all right this is not country enough or this is too country we were just like what what do we are what, when we get in the car what are we going to play our friends and family and, and try to you know what are they going to like and what do we like to sing and just what is dan and shay and we just kind of chased that we never <laughs> chased any other thing but who who we knew that we were and it was uh that just seemed to really work for us always and you watch people kind of try to chase it a lot of times where it's like, all right, this is what's happening right now. Right. And we got to try to do that. Point. And by the time you get there, it's already gone. And there's a next change, you know, yep. it's changed. You can't be the the next Luke Combs because Luke Combs is already, he's Luke Combs. Can't be the next Morgan Wallen or Jason Alvey. These things, they happen. And that's why, you know, the next person that's trying to be the next Dan and Shay and sing, you know, these love songs that, it's just usually not going to work because that, that lane mm -hmm. is already passed and genuine music always is the only stuff that works. Whatever is genuine to you, even though I did grow up, you know, in the country and all of these things that I, you know, I like to write about, you know, we're not going to cut them for Dan and Shay, but I like to write those songs, but it's, you have to know what is genuine to, to, you know, you as an artist. And it was just kind of fun to try to, you know, figure that out through the years and, as you know, as an artist, we're still trying to figure it out. You know, everybody's yeah. always trying to well, figure it out. But I, I really admire that about about you. And and I've said this forever, man. You know, in interviews, of course, because my I signed my deal in '07. My first single was either late '07 or early '08. I forget, but um, and the the radio sounded different then than it does now. Certainly, I mean, you're talking, you know, long time ago, uh, 14 yeah. years ago or whatever. And so in the middle part of my career to this point, you're talking 12, 13, something like that, 14, whatever the, the time was, you know, uh, that's when the uh, the more what pop sound and rap sound yeah. in country. I mean, all these different influences are finding their way into country music. So, of course, me as the traditional guy or whatever, um, I filled all these questions every time I do an interview at the time, you know, like, oh, what's real country? What's this and what's that? And I, my answer was always this, and I firmly believe it, I still believe it, is, and I've said the same thing since for, you know, a decade now or whatever it's been, is you do you. Whatever is, 
whatever you are, which is basically exactly what you just said. Don't chase this. Don't chase that. If you're this kind of country, do this. If you're this kind of country, do this. And if you're this kind of, as long as it's real, people yeah. will respect it. <clears throat> and yeah. and I and by people I mean you know your peers. Um, and I'm speaking for myself, but yeah, um, the fans. And I always said the fans are a lot smarter than they get credit for. They can cut through the BS yeah. instantly. And they know if if I go out and do this kind of song, they're going to be going, what's he doing? That ain't yeah. him. And if you guys go out and do this kind of song, they're going to be going, what are they what are, what are they doing? Yeah. Like that's, you know, and and so I admire that, man, that you guys stuck to your guns and um you know, I, another question I I get a lot is like what do you attribute your longevity to and it's just that just doing yeah. whatever is real to me and and you know because again people can tell if you're chasing this and that and and you're contradicting yourself you know you can't yeah. go out and say i'm about this whether it be a lifestyle thing or whether it be a type yeah. of song or music or whatever and then you go do something completely different they go he's lying to us yeah and they you know, know it immediately and, you know like you said yeah you know it's it's one of those things where, sorry, I just got a phone call. Thomas Thank Rhett's you. trying to call me. I haven't talked to him in a while. We need to just like, asshole. hey, you want to come on that Zoom? Yeah, uh, <laughs> ruining my Zoom, dude. I had a whole flow. I was about to say something <laughs> prolific. He's literally trying to call me back again. This is unbelievable. Gosh, again. Tell him to stop this, I'm gonna side. I'm going to side text him. TR, knock it off. You're ruining my podcast, you bro. You should text, text him and tell him we're doing a podcast. We've got important <laughs> things to talk about. So I'm going to send him the I, Zoom link. <laughs> there we go. So, dude, I, it was uh, – it was crazy when I when I look at that though, just like you said, you know, people are very they're smart. Like the fans are smart. And I think what kind of drives that though of people, you know, trying to chase something and what gets them to you know, trying to do something that's not them is it is haters on Instagram and, and Twitter right. and all the people that go up there and they're like, This is what we want you to be. And it's it's hard not to, you know, because you could see fifty thousand comments that says, This is the greatest thing I've ever heard. And then you have like the two that are like, this ain't country, dude. You should just quit, yeah. you know, and you have yeah. this, this yeah. isn't, I hate you. And they don't even go after like just your music. They're like, you know, I think those guys are pretty talented, but I, I hate this. This is horrible. <laughs> yeah. You're like, this is not. And so you he's just got an awful, you, he's got a black yeah. soul. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, that guy should quit music and maybe just go away forever to Alaska. Or <laughs> yeah. Something. Yeah. And you're just like, man, it, you know, you can't help, but. And I have it, you know, there's a lot of us that struggle with that. I know all of us, even if we say it doesn't bother us, it always bothers you when you see someone who not just doesn't like your music, but kind of questions your character of, you know, that drives yeah. me nuts where you're just like, you're like, you don't even know me. You don't Give even, you have nothing, you know, you know, nothing about me, but it's, it's something that we all have to live with as artists and kind of deal with because you it comes know, you with see, the territory, man. It well, comes it, with the territory. Or I don't. I, I learned early on. Uh, uh, sorry, Jr. No, go ahead, buddy. I used to look at everything, read everything, read reviews, like album reviews. I learned early on. I had a list a mile long of people's asses I wanted to go kick. Yeah, and I you said, got their usernames written down. Yeah, I said this ain't healthy, man. Or even like you know a writer for a uh, you know an online deal or what. I'm like, ah, right, you got it. So I just stopped looking. This was 10, 12 years ago. I just stopped looking, man. I've been. Happy as a lark ever since. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, it, it, well, it's, it's, I've it's the way best way to do it. it. For sure. I yeah, mean, and, and even on the <laughs> even on the side thing, somebody will try to side somebody into it to try to get you to provoke an argument. They'll say, yeah. you know, even like me or in person or online or anything. So, so what about so and so? Don't so and so this or that? And I'm like, bro, that's my buddy. Well, you talk, and they yeah. they're like they want me to jump on the train with them, and I'm like, bro, that's my buddy. I like all types of music. I don't know what you talk about. You just offended me. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. but they, they just feel entitled enough to, to have, like you said, to, I hate this person. You should hate them too. I'm like, that's my buddy. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. I like, when, I like what they're doing. My, you know, it, it, I've said this before. It's like, like somebody like brother, uh, Luke Bryan or somebody, he's not writing. He's not making music. I'm not his clientele. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, it, so that it's not on repeat on my truck. I love, he's my friend. I want him to have the most success for anybody <laughs> in the world, but yeah, it's just, that's not made. That's not what a 42 year old me is, is jamming right this second. But yeah. also the stuff I'm listening to probably doesn't sell as much as what the, the kids, the youth are buying right now. When I was a kid, 
you know, the hip hop, the 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 Guns N' Roses, the rock, the the country stuff, the '90s country, all that stuff was huge, you know. And and I'm sure the guys my age now then were like, rah, 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 rah. that ain't Merle Haggard, you know, or <laughs> yeah. that ain't that ain't Led Zeppelin. It's like, uh, well, no, but so anyway. But they're not making Led Zeppelin was your thing. This is my thing. Yeah. So it's just funny well, how people always- want to can complain like you said but it'll yeah. be 200 thank you for your music thank you for doing this chance you got me out of this got me through this you know and then jackass here that's got two followers hey you guys suck you should just quit you're not real it's like come on yeah, nice, man. nice nice pants man let's yeah, paint right. it on yeah. <laughs> all right now you're now you're attacking my pants all right this is great. but it is hilarious man people there i used to, there was this one kid that just cracked me up and he uh it, 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 usually these people would never say it to your face but this kid came up no to me one never, time. never never do keyboard it. warriors this, man there was a kid in uh there was a kid in arkansas one time at a walmart and he was like he's like hey man he's like you know you're a pretty nice guy you know uh, he's like I, i'll pretty, be honest pretty nice. like, i hated i hated uh i hate your music but <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and, I, and I'm sitting here in front of this kid, and I was like, I, I respect that if you do it in person. He 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 said I was a nice guy. I'm fine with this, you know. But yeah. it was hilarious because he told me he's like, you know, he's like, it's not my kind of music, you know. I'm listening to you know Merle Haggard, and he's naming all these artists that were. He was not even born by the time they were <laughs> right. gone. <laughs> I mean, right. you know, and it's just hilarious. And I'm just like, I love that you know you are that you know supportive of, of people that you love. That's amazing, but. What's funny to me is, especially now with the radio and with all the streaming services and the way that you get music, it's like, man, why are you listening to our music? Why are you even taking the time to yeah. check it out? Did and you comment. think that this was going to be what you wanted? You know, they go out of their way to like put one star just on your iTunes review and just says, great song, not country. <laughs> and it just one star. You're like, <laughs> like, you even yeah. liked it? It's just not country <laughs> enough for you. So that, it just well, gets the, funny, man. The great news about that is uh, those guys and gals who think that way are certainly by a long shot in the minority because you guys have had so much success. I mean, it speaks for itself. Absolutely. And, um, Thank you, man. And I'm thrilled uh, for you because I know you personally and, and you're a great guy. But like I said earlier, man, you, you for those out there listening, I don't even think you you need me to say this or to know this, but I'll say it anyway. Shay is one of, if not the best singer, not only in our genre, but in the world. Yep. I mean, his vocal range is, is unreal. Unreal. I'm going I'm to clip that right there. <laughs> and that's going to be my so, ringtone for when you call me. <laughs> well, it's I'm true, play man. It Walmart, I wouldn't like, say it if it wasn't true. Oh, thank and, you, buddy. I mean, your pitch is perfect. I mean, you just... So how often do you tell Dan how lucky he is that uh, you do all the work and... <laughs> And, and he's he got great to, hair. Yeah. <laughs> you hey, know, speaking I wish, of Dan, I just, I just, uh, I just learned who his father-in-law was like a few months ago. I had yes, no idea that Mike, Mike was Kennedy. his father-in-law. The, the, and this an is inside legend. stuff that nobody listening will understand, but uh, legendary radio guy uh, who we're all great friends with, and wild. I've man. known Mike for fifteen years. Wild but, man. Uh, had no idea. He told me that he came to a show of mine in Kansas City recently. He told me that, and I'm like, "You're lying." He's like, "No, seriously." I'm like, "Why would that's the most random thing for you to ever make up?" It, it would like, be. No, a random I'm dead thing to make serious, up. man. <laughs> so anyway, Dude, I thought Mike, that was Mike Kennedy. Funny. He's one of the greatest human beings alive, man. Yeah. But I, here's here's the thing, is that uh, all I do is sing, and Dan does literally everything else. <laughs> and so I feel I feel very lucky. I mean, I ain't producing. Like they ask us sometimes, you're like, oh well, you know, what's y'all's process like in the studio? And I'm like, dude, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know, it's pr- I, let me talk. I'll get let me get back with you because uh, I I haven't I haven't been to quite all of them because I just usually get to. You know, Dan puts in all the work, and the man never stops working. I guarantee you, right now, he's working on Christmas music for next year. And I'll go in there and I'll do, I'll do a vocal on it, and then I'll just have this finished track, and it'll be the easiest thing. And he sits there and stacks vocals for 17 hours, and I'm like, dude, how do you even? And he doesn't have kids yet, and so you know, that's that that helps. But you know, he does have a wife, and I know she gets in there and has to drag him out of the studio all the time because he's just yeah. he's a workaholic in in the best of ways, but. It's uh, so you, it's been you fun, sound, man. You sound like me. Like I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I hate the studio. I mean, it's better than digging ditches and roofing houses, <laughs> which I've done that. 
But, you know, like my producer, for example, he just loves sitting in there and listening to the same line over and over and over and over and over. And I'm like, dude, I'm good with the first one. I don't, I don't, you know, as long as it has the right emotion. Yep. And it's on pitch. I'm good with it. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm I, the studio bores me to tears. I like tracking and I'm heavily yeah. involved in tracking. <laughs> Uh, Cause I know what I want it to be and sound like and the instrumentation and all that. So that's cool. But when it comes to the vocal aspect, I go in, I sing it, boom, done. I'm out. Like, I don't want no part of, you know, the copy and paste and here and there and listening over and over and over and over. And you're talking hours, as you know, hours, but guys yeah. like Dan, it sounds like in my produce, they love it. They, Loves they, it. Uh, love it well it's, that's the secret to the sauce you guys hate it they love it that's how the magic so happens Dan, right? the Dan and and yang. completely we're complete opposites in a lot of ways and that's i think i attribute that to honestly our success because when you have kind of the yin and, yin and the yang it just it just works as he really does like he'll go in the studio and i'll be you know i'll, I'll come for the tracking sessions because i do love that like you said it's really fun to kind mm -hmm. of get in there and involved but not for the the amount of time he does it you know, I'll get in there and I'm thinking like, oh, this would be fun. Like I'll go over there for like a couple hours, you know, and I get over there at noon and it's about seven o'clock and I'm like, Phew. so you guys, you think we're about, about to wrap this thing up? Yeah. Or is this like, yeah. you guys Are do this eating? all the time, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, we spent, is this being catered today? Is this, yeah, right. you know? <laughs> and, and they're just in there working, man. And I watch, you know, they, we came up and uh, you're probably familiar with Scott Hendricks, uh, oh, yeah. a legendary producer for people who wouldn't know yeah. who he was. He did just about any song that you probably listened to growing up. I mean, all yep. the Blake Shelton stuff, you know, all of the Brooks and Dunn and a lot of these just probably has, you know, a hundred number ones as a producer at this point and watching them come in and just work together. He, he kind of helped on the first couple albums or the first album Scott co-produced with Dan. And I'll, I'll say this about, uh, about Dan, this is a huge compliment coming from Scott. I remember one time uh, we were in there and he goes, I'll be honest. And we were talking about, uh, John Esposito, our label president, and he was like, and I'm not lying when I say this. And he's like, I'm really, I have good ears. You know, he's like, I've been doing this for a long time. He's like, but Dan has the best ears and can hear things that I I could never hear. He said, wow. he's got the best ears that I've ever seen in the music industry. And I was like, that's crazy coming from, from Scott Hendricks, but Dan will hear, right. it drives me nuts too. <laughs> we got, we got a little buddy over yep, here. Yeah, they're killing it, dude. Let's go. Come on in, bud. He's getting uh, his hog helmet. He's, that's amazing. Okay. You see okay. what he's got on? He's For got those that out hog there, dude. That is he amazing. He just went and grabbed a hog hat. <laughs> he's dinosaur. <laughs> That's the best part of this whole interview. If you were to be like, yeah. what are they even talking about? This is the and best part. In, and it's uh, 2 o'clock and he's in his underwear. Hey, can I see you under yeah, yeah, I'll put it on here. You got to check it. There we go. That's it. <laughs> yours got yours are in that stage too i mean you, you got one about to be five and a two almost two you said yeah you're 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 just getting they're about to get just fully mobile started. buddy my nephew's a little, it's two and a half buddy and i'm telling you he is no 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 at 100 miles an hour here it comes oh yeah this it one right here his okay. favorite is hulk smash uh si his name's south and his favorite hey, is hulk girl. smash hey yeah hey buddy tell shay hey say hey shay hey shay hey buddy <laughs> have say, you hey, figured buddy. out that you're uh have you figured out that hey, you're a lot Shay. cooler than your dad <laughs> he probably <laughs> can't hear me He's got... i got my ear buddy have you figured out that you're a lot cooler than me <laughs> yep he's out he's like they, yeah i totally. figured that would happen before now so for those out there listening and not watching this my four-year-old finally made his appearance he's nailing he's killing the game over there dude he's even Man, putting he's, back uh, his toys I and mean, what a legend dude know, my kids right? don't do that at all. if i turn this thing around you wouldn't believe the things that are in this player. I'll show you a little bit. This is my little boy likes to make He's these something. little race car tracks. Oh, he likes to oh we have those too. They there, you know. I think I we get them from Dollar General them. actually. I'm pretty sure that, that might be where we got them too. They sell them in bulk. We've got about seven hundred dollars worth, which is about seven miles. <laughs> uh, so is your little boy five? Is he the one that's almost five? Yeah, his his birthday is in January uh, 24th, so he'll be five in January. And then we have Ames, my youngest, who's going to be two. In, uh, or, uh, sorry, Ash was January 24th, and he's February 21st. So they're just kind of oh, back-to-back. For some reason, I thought you had a boy and a girl. You got two I know, boys. I got two boys. Okay, my, uh, my, well, my, he'll be, my youngest he'll be looks four. Like, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, my, my youngest, he has like real blonde. He looks like Hannah. 
And it is funny if we're not, I, I dress them, I dress it. Thank God. <laughs> we dress <laughs> I'm them. Kidding. I, I'm always putting them in like the most, you know, cause people, when you, when you have a little, uh, a little kid, you know, and they're, and they're super blonde. Sometimes it's, it's hard to tell when they're young where you're just like, I don't, you know, and you try to, you don't want to guess because you're like, oh, he's so cute. And they'll real, they'll say like, yeah, you know, she is a little cutie, you know, <laughs> and then like <laughs> right, make sure yeah. to correct you in like the kindest way. But so I always put like a, you know, make, make him dress in real cool uh, guy clothes. So everyone's like, doesn't have to ask. You know? <laughs> like, I, I even do that with my dog. Sweet little girl. They'll say, yeah. hey, bu- hey, hey, come over here, boy. And I'm like. She's got a pink collar on. Stop. That's not a boy. She's got a pink collar on. Come on. Well, that that's am I'm actually amazed uh, because he'll be five in in June, so they're close to the same age. But um, which is a really fun age. It is. Um, it's actually probably my the most fun age to me. Like three, four, five. That they still need you, but they can communicate with you. They still cuddle. They're you know. Yeah all that good stuff and you know, when they get trust me you, you're only a couple years away from the smart mouths and, <laughs> and, I, and I, worry, I worry about it too and you can see the difference in my kids and i know which one's going to give me trouble already and my oh, yeah. youngest he's and well it's because he's he's my wife's so he looks just just like my wife thank god that that's blue amazing eyes, blonde hair that's amazing man because i have uh my hair's gotten darker but i used to be a cotton top and i have blue eyes and my wife hair colors about like yours yeah and every one of ours dark headed dark eyed so that's like, crazy your wife must have some strong blonde jeans she because must. that uh, usually don't that usually don't come uh, that, that never through. happens yeah it never happens no. so i was like man because asher looks just like me but he is a spitting image of hannah and i just know like she's she doesn't take any bs that's why she you know she deals with me yeah. <laughs> she's like i just know the aims he'll just take a bottle and he'll look you right in your face. And he, if he's got just like an attitude and you're like, Asher or Ames, don't you, don't you throw that bottle and he'll look you right in the face and just go and just <laughs> chuck it against the wall. And I'm just like, this is, this is cute right now, but 15 year old, you get a, a whooping if that happens, you know, and yeah. I know it's coming. It's so funny how different their personalities are. You know, I, again, I have four and I mean, they're all, all of them are completely different. I mean, it's, yeah. it's correct. I'm an only child. So, you know, I, I live in a completely different environment in which I grew up, you know, (laughs) and I'm like, why can't y'all get along? I don't get it. You know? And my wife is one of three and she's going, that's just normal. Uh, yeah. Justin, like they (laughs) are are always going to fight. And I'm like, it it hurts my feelings. So I know it hurts her feelings (laughs) that she's calling her this or like my 12 year, almost 12 year old came up to me yesterday. She goes, dad, no, it was a few days ago. I was watching the basketball game. And she goes, and she goes, Dad, Kennedy just punched me in the face, right in the mouth. And I'm like, well, what'd you do? You know, it's just like, I'm like, yeah. I, she just doubled up her fist and punched her right in the mouth. I've, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this information. Yeah, what, what am I supposed to do? Dude, yeah. I, I, Ames, Ames hits Asher all the time, dude. I mean, it's like he'll be sitting there, and Asher's kind of me. He's got a real tender heart, like just – you know, gets really upset that Ames doesn't, and he'll say things like that right now. He's starting to be like, Ames doesn't love me, daddy. And you know, you're like, oh my God, that's the saddest thing I've ever, and you're like, oh buddy, you know, and I'm making excuses for him. Like he, he loves you. And then in my heart of hearts, I'm like, honestly, I don't know what he's thinking because he can't <laughs> quite talk. You know, yeah. I don't know. There might be some inner issues there. I don't know, but he'll just go up and he'll hit him, <laughs> you know? And he's like, it's not like he's going to hit him back. You know, he's just too soft hearted and he'll just sit there and take it. And it's real sad to watch. Cause he's just like, and I look at Hannah, I'm like, this is your, you see what you're doing. You're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're basically hitting our child. This, you're you responsible this. for this. <laughs> you did this. Yeah. Well, well that's what I, I used to say about one of mine and I won't say which one, cause th- she's smart enough to listen to this, but, um, and then, come back at me with a knife or something <laughs> jr knows which one i'm talking about I, i've always said she's either uh, a serial killer or a nuclear physicist uh there's yep. a fine line there. and there's no way so, to know at this point you no, know what i mean no. there's no you gotta wait it out you gotta kind of wait it out which is honestly <laughs> i think that might be kind of it's like it's, that's horrible to say probably but it yeah. is the most true thing that you could ever say as a parent where you're just like you can love them as much as you want but honestly how your kids turn out sometimes you can't help it and so yeah. really that's kind of the truth of parenthood is that it's just a waiting game we don't know <laughs> yet you know we could just have a couple of just horrible kids that is not that's not the truth 
I don't think that'll ever happen to our kids. But you know, no. neither did neither did Jeffrey Dahmer's parents. Probably, I mean, you just know. like you said, you just never know. You could do everything or nothing, and, and who knows hey, how it's going. And turn I'm out. sure, I'm sure there was deep seated issues in there that we don't have in our families. But you right. do see every once in a while in the news where kids are just, you know, they're in jail, and then the parents are turning them in. You know, it's just like, kid, like what happened here? Yeah. You know, and you're just like, well, nothing happened. You know, Jimmy's just a psychopath. You know, and those yeah. those exist. <laughs> That is yeah, you gotta, my greatest fear that those exist like that, gotta watch. that for no other reason. We're loved as kids and just went out and did something insane. That's that's terrifying. <laughs> to me. Can't they believe gotta, that's a thing. You got to watch who their friends are, who they're running with. And I know my daddy said that the boys are trouble. And I was, oh, they're my buddies. Oh, yep. Looking back. Yep. Those boys are trouble. And uh, and and then and if they don't hey, have friends, you got to watch them just as equally because you know, oh, your, friend, watch your friends' parents were saying that about you too. Don't hang 100%. out with Ronalds. One hundred percent. That dude is trouble. One hundred percent. You know, and some of us get out of it. Now maybe we should feel guilty because I was probably that bad influence a couple times in my life. And those kids didn't make it back to the bright side. You know, <laughs> like they're at a gas right. station. Like you know, I started hanging out with Shay Mooney, and things got a little dark. It's <laughs> yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. Started drinking yeah. beer and smoking hey, cigarettes. Yeah. Hey, real quick, Shay. So I this is kind of my experience at home, and I'm curious what yours is. And I, I'm sure I probably know, um, because even though we grew up a few hundred miles from each other, it's the same same situation, I'm assuming. So people always ask me, because I live in my hometown, which is about 300 people. Yeah. And um, so very, very similar to yours. And they're like, man, do people, what are people like there, you know, and as it pertains to me and my career. Yeah. And, and I'm like, man people are super proud of and for me and my family and they're happy for us and but they really could not care less oh yeah while i'm here <laughs> like they're yeah. like all right cool uh so what time you know i coach all my kids in in basketball and softball <laughs> they're like all right cool uh you're doing this or you know you you were on the award show last night what time's basketball practice today <laughs> and I'm like, uh, you know, so they, which I absolutely love. And that's why I yeah. live here. I mean, I, you know, I like being treated quote unquote normal, you know, yeah. and being, you know, uh, expected to do certain things and, you know, relied upon. And, and so I'm assuming, um, it's, it's definitely that I don't want to project exactly. that on you. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't want to answer it for you, but I'm assuming it's probably similar where you, grew up when oh, you yeah. get back home they're you're just shay you ain't shay mooney dan and shay shay mooney yeah. it is it's funny to me man i've thought of a lot about this and i think it's probably it's not as bad when i'm home for quite a while like we went over like during the pandemic we spent like a good chunk you know in arkansas back on the farm your wife's <laughs> and, from uh, arkansas too or no my wife yeah my wife's also from arkansas okay. but she's from the kind of opposite side she's over in franklin arkansas which is even small, there's like 130 people in her town, <laughs> but there's like a, it's Batesville. It's kind of over toward, okay. toward that direction. Yeah. So yeah. she's from over there. And it, it is funny when you're home for a little while, then people don't feel like the, the, like the rush of, you know, I have to get as, I, this might be my, never be my chance again, you know, but when people right. knew I was kind of coming back, like, you, you know, you'll see him, you know, it's, so don't, you know, he's, it's not like he's never going to come back again. Uh, but it is funny to see kind of, now it's the, it's always the younger kids that are in high school that are, you know, coming up and like, you know, you know, my brother, so, you know, something and they, everybody always has right. a story, which is hilarious, but they're always super sweet in my, in my town. There's, you know, and there's a Van Buren is not far away from where I live in Fort Smith. It's only like 30 minutes, you know? So we go into, you know, what we call the city and we go eat somewhere nice, you know, like a Chili's and you go in there, you know, <laughs> you know, the fancy places, <clears throat> but at, at Chili's yeah. is my spot. I eat there every time. But uh, it is, I think the funniest thing for me about kind of going away and then having success, all my buddies, they, they don't care, but they also, you know, they support you. And, you know, it's not like they're, they're mean about it, but they, all they care about is like, when you, when you come in, when you coming back, you know, my, my best yeah. friend from home, he always says like, dude, uh, you know, he asked me a long time ago, you think you could ever get so big that you could have a house here too? You know? And I was like, man, I, I hope so. And it was like to the day, probably two years later. And he was like, 
Hey man, send me this long text. Like, Hey man, he's like, I've been saying, you know, things are going pretty well. He's like, how close do you think you are from uh, <laughs> having the money to come back home? <laughs> you know, that's all he's yeah, worried I, about. I think you've achieved, I think you've achieved that. I was like, first of all, I was like, if you see the prices in Arkansas, you know, there was like a place for sale and it's going up now, but around my hometown, there was a piece of land that was like 320 acres for like 200 grand. I was like, Oh my God, that's the, that's the craziest yeah. thing up here. You couldn't find 300 acres for under, you know, $25 no. million, dollars, right. which is just insane. No, but it's, uh, I, I think this was my point a while ago. And I was going to say, I think the funniest thing that happens and it's usually the people who kind of grew up with you, but you never really hung out with, but they've kind of held on to it, you know, <laughs> their whole right. lives that they, they knew you. The funniest things is when they almost try to bring you down where instead of just kind of <laughs> treating you normal, they're like, you know, man, I just love that to us. Like you just are nothing, you know, you're just playing nothing. And I just, you know, and I'm, you know, and you kind of like shake it. You're like, Oh yeah. You know, and you're trying to be cool. It's like, you know, yeah, we're both of us. Like we're humble guys because we don't see ourselves as, you know, as other people see us sometimes, we're just, we're just us. Yeah. You know? I, I always you, say, I always say when you look in the mirror in the morning, you just see you the same yes. you you've always seen. You yes. Know? But it's also, I also look in the mirror and I, and I do feel proud of like, I'm so happy that I get to live this life and thankful for these successes. I, I, they, they do the opposite. They're like, you know I mean? It's just like nothing. Those great enough. None of that matters at all. And you're like, I wouldn't go to your law practice and say, dude, you've got nothing. You know what yeah, I mean? Right, and right. Like, and like take them down. So I was like, dude, you realize that you, you know, telling me that it's cool that I'm normal, you're going too far with it. You know yeah, what I mean? You, At yeah. this point, I feel disrespected. I have a little yeah, bit enough. of pride in myself, you know? But it's hilarious because they think that that's going to put you, like, dude, we're not going to treat you weird. You know what I mean? It's like, well, just don't treat me weird. Don't spend 30 minutes telling me how everything I've done for the last 10 years means nothing at all. You know, you're like, that yeah. hurts my feelings well, a little bit. They, they, right? Yeah, they don't, people, and I always tell my wife this, because I'm like, why would that dude or that lady or whatever just say whatever they said? And I'm like, yeah. she goes, Justin, they don't know what to say to you. Yeah. They're they're intimidated by you. Yeah. And I, I've never, I'm not an imposing figure. You know, I'm small and... Uh, you know whatever i'm not i'm not and i'm, I'm six like, one for people who don't know i'm six one <laughs> right. I'm with it. yeah he is i've seen it yeah person. yeah he's seen um, it yeah. and so no I, it's, so it's a i'm like why are they intimidated by me like yeah it's so i i say that to say this I, I i think a lot of times people may not mean it the way that it comes off i just don't think they under they don't know how to talk to totally to me like they just normal. don't they don't or get you it. like yeah yeah and because i'm like they also just seriously don't understand be, that we're normal people like we don't feel yeah. that way either you know so they don't really know how to right how to start the conversation of like right. you know i i, I you know what you've done is awesome but i'm also not going to treat you like a a weirdo because that is one thing about fame is that it's all made it is made up anyways it's just out in the world people don't know you know you can't be like this is i got fame it's just a made up floating right. thing around that that has a weird hold on people and that's a weird thing for us to handle too because you're like man i don't this is not you know i just like to do this because i love music and this is not right you know i don't see myself as this you know this superstar you know that would be there's some well, people and not usually in the country genre people don't feel that way there's people in you know pop stars that kind of drink their own kool-aid but for the most of us we're just like man we're all trying to figure out how to make this not weird for everyone else too when we come back yeah. up, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. No you're like, well, I'm it. the same person I was. I've just been successful at my job, which is the goal when you get a job is to do well yeah. at it. I've done that. I'm, I'm still the same exact person. Like, just look in the mirror. It's still the same guy, still the same place, same guy. Oh, yeah. Well, I can tell well, you, you know, this Justin's too. Not, we, Justin's pretty rude to people back. I saw him in Arkansas. <laughs> oh, he yeah. was yelling at people, slapping <laughs> falling Oh, yeah. That's not true. Someone's going to take that clip and be like, I, I knew it. No, I, I, I'll tell you, they see him argue with somebody at the softball game. They think he's being mean. That's actually yeah. his cousin he's screaming at who's the umpire yeah. because he got a bad call. Well, that, that's yeah. all that is. It's no And you didn't no bring heat. casserole to Thanksgiving <laughs> right. like you promised. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 no doubt about it. Yeah, it's – um, I, w I was – I was trying to reference something that you brought up earlier pertaining to that, but I, I, I had a brain fart because my son just walked in with dinosaurs. Um, but Sometimes you got to do that, you know, keep you on yeah. your toes. Yeah. yeah. And, and sure. I know you got a ton of stuff to Shay, and, and I want to say, uh, uh, 
I got a few things I want to do wrapping up here. And I, I know Justin, maybe he'll remember what he where he was going with that. I want to say congrats on the new single, Rocking Its Way Up the Charts, Still My Love. I got the Thank charts you, the other day, y'all. Low 30s, rocking on up there. Be another big number one for you guys, hopefully. Congrats with that. I know I mentioned at the top of the show, Officially Christmas, the Christmas song, the single you guys got out now. It's killer. I was jamming it in here earlier. Uh, I got to get a little piece of that Mariah money. Don't blame you guys. I mean <laughs> – Buddy, are you kidding He's me? He's got a I hold mean, on it, man. I, 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 I was listening to a thing yesterday. She's now there's going to be 12 days of Christmas for Mariah Carey at McDonald's where you get a special Mariah Carey cheeseburger with the Christmas song or something. I'm like, she is, I don't know, that one song, that's the power of a song. You know, that's, can, you, that's can like, you imagine? I just got to say this. Can you imagine, Justin? And can you imagine having a song that was, you know, a big hit for you? You can name any one of your, of your number ones and be like, how long has it been since that song's been out? I mean, it's got to be at least twenty years old. Yeah, at this probably. Point, right. Yeah. And yeah. can you probably, imagine? Like, probably longer than that. At least early two thousands, late nineties. Yeah, had to been. I mean, can you imagine getting a sponsor? I mean, that's that's you know millions of dollars kind of sponsorship. Can you imagine someone calling you up and be like, "Hey, we got a McDonald's ad. You know, oh, on what song is it? Still my love? Like, no, it's a song you did thirty years ago <laughs> that has always been around every single year, and you got another one. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine. The amount yeah. of money that it, that song by itself has made because it goes at number one, straight to number one if, every if, year. It's, it's like, like, like Dolly Claus. with, yeah, it's like Dolly with, uh, um, you know, Jolene. Yeah, are you talking about Jolene? No, no um, I was actually talking about the one that Whitney Houston did. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I will always love you. I will always love you. Yeah, it keeps coming I mean, it's back. Been done and, and how many times? Will. And every time goes straight to number one. Yep. Because it's if just I that get, good a matter of song. fact, if I if I start slumping here, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna record that because I, hey, I know that's <laughs> bound to be a number one record. It's about you, that time. It's been a few years since somebody cut it. Justin, you and I, one of these days, I guarantee you, we're gonna be. You know, our kids are gonna be 35 years old, and you're gonna see Justin Moore and Shay Mooney, and it's gonna be it's gonna be an album with two songs on it. It's gonna be All I Want for Christmas, and I will always love, <laughs> I'll you. love you. And we and are sell gonna a ton. get huge again. It's going to be yeah, huge. Yeah. You and I are going to be both, both <coughs> of us are going to be like uh, in the Razorback uh, <laughs> costume, the one that's on the floor <laughs> at basketball games. Yeah. Yeah. I'll uh, be uh, in, the... <laughs> in wheelchairs. Be, I'm oh in. You know, not that, I will say this, that not that bad of an idea. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> no. Hey, I'm idea. just saying. I so can't remember who it bit. was told me this. Maybe it was Stover or nah, somebody I remember talking to. We were talking about hits and stuff. And, that you know, uh, a, a bunch of hits are great, but you only need one. Devil went down to Georgia. That's all it takes, you know. That's all you it only, takes, man. You only need one. You need one. Uh, all I want for Christmas is you, and you can keep raking it in. So That's well, it, maybe, man. Maybe you guys will get a little piece of Mariah's I, Christmas I will action. say, though, let's, let's, be, let's be honest. It doesn't hurt to look – more like I, Mariah Carey than it does was Shay or say. myself. I it's mean, true. let's be I honest. Say. And my wife it's can't true. get mad. She knows that's one of my crushes. I mean, Resurrection of Mimi. <laughs> I mean, she's beautiful and she can sing. What are you talking about? You know, it is. You know, not to say that Justin and I aren't beautiful because I've been told <laughs> that I have a pretty face. JR told that. Yeah. Right yeah. before we got on. Right before we got Yeah, you look great, buddy. Yeah, he, uh, I surprised him. He got, he, he was kind of like, he was like, oh, I didn't realize you were so stunning. That's yeah, what you right. said to me. Yeah, yeah, well, last I saw you was at the golf tournament. The light was kind of wrong. The sun was kind of <laughs> shining on you wrong. I didn't get the right. Yeah. had a different halo <laughs> around you that time. Uh, that's it. That's good stuff. Yeah, well, maybe we get a million-dollar uh, policy on our legs like Mariah's got on hers. Uh, hey, speaking of speaking of big big, uh, big artists and stuff, we do something on here. We do the Mount Rushmore of country music. And we All decided right. early on getting that – is that Thor? I think it's Thor, yeah. That's Thor. The guy came, over here and dropped Odin. <laughs> came over here, dropped Thor, and said, "I got to go pee." Oh, I mean, that's that's pretty. These are the moments, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are but it. we decided early on that there Shay, is this no... the least professional done you've ever done in thing you've ever done in your career. <laughs> yeah, we are we are it's, we are, it's we are also hot, the funnest, so. Yeah, we are low oh, tech good. rednecks around here. We have we trademarking that sucker. Uh, there we go. But we we've always said that a def we we uh, we learned early on when we had some of our music buddies on that. A definitive Mount Rushmore of country music is impossible. It has yeah. to be a personal one because there's so many great artists over so many years that everybody's interpretation of their Mount Rushmore of country music is different. So, what would your personal Mount Rush what influence you that you just mm -hmm. liked? Who who you see as that this, the epitome of country music in 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 Shay's world? Man, that is a uh, <clears throat> that's a tough question, but. 
I, I, for one thing, I know I'm never going to be on the Mount Rushmore because there's two of us and no, no one's going to give up a spot, uh, on the, on the top there, but, uh, ah, you never know. Yeah. You never know. Maybe, 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 but I would have to say, let me, let me think. I, I have to put George Strait on there. Cause I, you know, I grew up just, he was one of my favorites always. And I covered a lot of his songs and that was just a big one for me. So I got to go King George. Um, I'd honestly have to say Kenny Chesney would be on there for me. Uh, just because that was such a, you know, I'm not going to go too far back because I, I wasn't really listening to, I, I listened to the old school country, but the, the 90s country was my, that's that was kind of it for me. Chesney's so got all great songs, man. He, he's a, he's great at picking songs. Absolutely. He's so good. I mean, you got songs like I Go Back that and, and, and Don't Blink that you're just like, well, how did how did somebody even write? It's, it's too good of a song. You're just like, it kind of wrecks me every time. But those two, for sure, um, I'd have to say, besides Justin Moore, because I would have picked you, but you're here and I can't do that. <laughs> I'd have to probably say, I need to write these down because I don't want to say it wrong and then want to change it later. You know what I mean? It's very important. You're not – hey, I can tell you this. You've, you're in the same situation everyone we've asked this. Yeah, we're, exactly. we all Tough. do the same thing. Yeah, it's – you're no you rush. Also, what if what if there's, a you know, a person that you, you might want to meet on there – you know what I mean? And you leave them off because you just forgot. And they would have maybe heard it because people right now, I just looked at the counter. There's 48 million people watching this, this podcast right now. Just check yep. it. And it's going up. <laughs> it's going up by the second. Yep. And what's crazy is that it hasn't even come out yet. And that's nuts. That's good numbers. <laughs> Modern technology. <laughs> Modern technology. Let me, let me think of who else I'm going to get. You know what? I, I always, I grew, I loved Gary out, Allen. Son. I don't know. I don't know if I could put him on the rush more. Sure. But he was one. someone that I just loved. You know what I mean? I know he was never, you know, up to George Strait, you know, status. Oh no, but that's I always but that, yeah, that's but that's <laughs> uh, you know, that's 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 part of your per. That's why we said it's so tough to have a definitive one. It's your personal Mount yeah. Rushmore, you know, because everybody's, you know, there's going to be and it's four, it's four of them, right? It's Mount Rushmore, it's four, four or five, and it's yeah. four. And I okay. did my four, and then I put Hank Jr. as the cloud above my four because <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't, bu I couldn't <laughs> bump his dad. But I'm like, yeah, well, I'll true. just put Hank as the cloud hanging around Mount Rushmore. You got creative with that's smart, dude. Well, I'll, I'll get to my my grass and the rocks in a second, but uh let's see here i'd probably have to put keith urban in there honestly just because there were so many songs that that i uh, i listened to that were just you know right there when i was first getting into like that's the kind of country that i that i want to write you know memories of us and all these songs were just so freaking good man and uh the he's last one, of the one I'd and, probably... and he's one of the nicest guys in country <laughs> music as well yeah you really but yes, if you is. left him but if you left him off you'd be backstage somewhere and he'd flip the nice guys ha 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 so, by yeah. the way, let's have a talk. <laughs> he like, changed his voice. You're like, oh, wait, First of all, it smell really good because I don't know if you guys know this about Keith. Everybody smells unbelievable. It's a pretty intoxicating. As a man, I feel pretty <laughs> uncomfortable. And he gets up there and he's like, hey, Shay, I just want to let you know that I uh, actually heard that Justin Moore podcast and uh, – Pretty pissed off if I'm perfectly honest with you. <laughs> that was a horrible Keith Urban impression. Yeah. I've done Nikki's better. mad as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she's also mad. My whole, whole family hates you now. <laughs> I'm but, willing uh, to bet she smells better than he does. And he she does smell, smell good amazing. because of her. That could be it. I've never thought about that. I never thought about he that. Is, no, he is a great dude. Great dude. I would have summer to... comes around might be my favorite. <sighs> dude, I mean, it's, it's absolutely uh, incredible. Uh, uh, it's unbelievable. His lit the, the 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 guitar licks were half of the hooks. It was just unbelievable. Yeah. Which and again I have to is all one. him. This is, not, this is so hard to to get the last one. Rascal Flatts music were a huge influence on me as well. But there, there there's three of those guys. I gotta you know, ask I, this. I, don't know if they could share. I know you listened to uh, you you did a lot of <clears throat> uh, gospel singing and Christian singing coming up through the ranks. Was there any of those yeah. of those guys that you did? Did you listen to like a lot of the Oaks or the Isaacs or any of that kind of oh, yeah. stuff? Absolutely. I, I, and there was a lot of, of, uh, of those for me. And, I, and I'll say this cause I, I would say a guy I always thought was the coolest and that could be, I, I could put him probably on my Mount Rushmore of people. Uh, and I think that everybody in town likes him. He's also been kind of involved with, with country, but Chris Tomlin was like one of the coolest guys ever growing up. You know what I mean? Cause yep. he was like, he was a worship leader and he'd always be at these cool like youth conferences, you know, when I was younger. <laughs> So that would, I could put him up there, and he's an amazing dude too. And he's gotten he loves country music. He's done a lot of they did a you know that collaborations album 
uh, with, with yep. a bunch of country artists on there. That was really, really great. But he, I could put him on my, my Rushmore of, of just musicians that I loved uh, for sure. That could be it. So, and I'm just, so you know what, just actually, I'm going to take him off. Let's just put Justin Moore on there because I, I did <laughs> love me some Justin Moore. You know, I did. I, and, and it was funny, Boy. though, because you're a little bit older than I was. So when I was coming, and how, how old are you, Justin? You're 61, right? Or is it 63 now? <laughs> That's was about he, how you act most I of the time, to be how, honest with you. I love how you, you we, early on in this uh, discussion, you, you mentioned something about the fact that people said, you know, the career you had or something to that effect being yeah. – uh, in the past, and you just said you did love just more. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I currently, to, yeah. I'm currently I'm currently yeah. making uh, new music. Uh, yeah, continuing well, you know, to to have hits there, Shay. So what I meant was when I was a small Doom, child, when maybe? I was three uh, years old. Yeah. You know, I mean, listening <laughs> to music when I was no, three. Be, those are early be, ones, uh, you know. I'm just a month or two away from 38. Couple months away. All right, so you're not you're not so. much older than me. I, I thought that's about how you were. I'm about to be thirty in, in December twenty seventh. I'll be I've, I'll have crossed over to the, you know, to the the good the years threshold. Yeah, yeah, the threshold. But it's uh, I did man, I, I did love. I mean, your music, especially being from Arkansas, it was fun to watch that happen because you were. There's not many of us that come. You know, you got Charlie Daniels is from Arkansas, right? So no, he's Charlie, from was, uh, no, Carolina. Who? So there's, we got there's one other here's person. what I look. Here's what I love about talking to you today, though, is because we've had to deal with all this Georgia crew for so long, but now yeah. we're starting to build a pretty nice little uh, Arkansas we've got a nice, contingency. Yeah. Well, it was so Joe, Joe Nichols is one. Joe, Joe Nichols. Joe, you had um, Colin you Ray. Had, obviously, in the you had Conway Twitty. You had Johnny yeah. Cash, Glenn Campbell. Those are the legends. Um, you had Joe. Tracy Lawrence, yep. um, Colin Ray, Colin Ray, uh, obviously you, myself, uh, Ashley, Mack. Ashley McBride. That's um, right. That's right. I forgot Ashley was from Arkansas. I love, who, I love uh, Ashley. There's a couple of new acts. Um, who am I forgetting? Uh, um, what's the tall guy, Matt Stell, and he Arkansas? Matt Stell. Matt Stell is, yeah. Uh, and a hell of a songwriter and artist in his own right, Adam Hambrick. Adam oh, Hambrick, absolutely. I don't know if you've met him. Uh, Heath Sanders, I don't know <clears> if you've met him, but another incredible singer, songwriter. Um, so we're starting to build that up. We're I like starting that. to build like some, the, some, some nice little, little crew. Razorbacks, we, we you know, build, build into this thing, the better. It is, because you always have the, like you said, the Georgia – it's just fun because they've got a whole crew and I, and I, we can't forget either. Like, you know, Bobby Bones has been a great advocate for yep. obviously not a musician, yep. but also been a, you know, a huge Razorback fan. So we've got right. a good crew. Cause it, it, there's a lot of Georgia Bulldog fans out there. I mean, just unlimited Too Adam many. Hambrick, Adam Hambrick is uh, I, I love Adam cause he actually, I'm pretty sure it might not have been his first. I think it might've been his first number one. Actually we it was, we discussed this. Yes. Go ahead though. That was our so how not to the song how not to was our first outside song that we ever cut ever and it was a and it was a big hit for us and i think that that was it was right in the era when he was writing that he had probably had already written uh somebody so he wrote somebody else will right yeah and so, a lot of, he wrote a lot on that that the new album didn't he or they worked with his he wrote producer a couple Paul. off of he wrote a couple <laughs> off of that particular album but yeah. i think i think where you're going with this is and we had Adam on here, and um, I've known Adam for a long time, as I'm sure you have. But I was, I had Adam's first cut. It was a duet but, uh, with myself and Miranda Lambert, a song off an album a while ago, and um, great song. And absolutely, uh, and Miranda killed it, as you can imagine, and. So then we put out somebody else will after that, I think off the next album. And I was thinking it was going to be his first number one. But I think y'all beat it by like beat a week or it two. It wasn't much. It a was a couple like of right weeks there. or something. Yeah. And so yeah, I Justin was, was on the podcast like, yeah, I had your first number one. And he was like, well, actually, it was Dad and Shay a few weeks before like, that. Oh, oh, man. You know, and well, what that a was contrast, a, you know? What a well, contrast. You guys like, are you kidding me? You let those guys be your first. <laughs> you gotta be joking. It no, is what that happened right there at the at the same time. It's pretty cool mm -hmm. though. Just a bunch of like having a guy from Arkansas. And I'm sure yep. that this is you know. And we'll wrap this up. See, we've been talking for six hours. No one's oh, gonna yeah. watch the whole thing. 
But I was like, uh, I was talking with somebody and I was like, I think the coolest thing for me as an artist is to be able to cut a song or write a song with a songwriter that's a new, you know, songwriter and change their lives completely. Yeah. I think that's to me is just the coolest experience for, for as, as an artist to be able to, and even it's the same with like, you know, your road crew and being able to like build that up and to be able to pay for, you know, help pay for their family's well being. You right. know, it's just kind of a crazy thing. Yeah. And I, that happened with us and a, and a guy named Jordan Reynolds who, you know, wrote tequila, speechless, all the, my son, he, he's on like, you know, most of our songs at this point. And it's, it was crazy to see, you know, that kind of changed his life. And then he has a kid and, you know, and you're just thinking, man, what a, what a cool experience that is so much bigger than us. We just got to be a it's part of it. It's an awesome responsibility. Pretty, it's an awesome responsibility. I saw him buying a beach house and I was like, well, my God, man, are you getting a bigger percentage than me? What's that? <laughs> you're doing well, Jordan. My God. Yeah. That's awesome. that, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing to, to have happen. That's, so that's funny. the beauty of music. Yep. Yeah. That's so funny. You mentioned tequila. I don't think I've ever told you this story. But so uh, Rodney Clawson, who's an incredible Hall of Fame songwriter, yeah. um, a friend of mine, I'm sure a friend of y'all's. Um, we've written a lot of songs together over the years. And so I, I forget when Tequila came out. Was that maybe four or five years ago? Yeah, it was in uh, something like that. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. It's, it's been, and, and, yeah. And so I had. And the reason I bring up Rodney is because Rodney's wife wrote tequila. And so I'm writing with Rodney. I talked to him about this song that I just put on hold that I am stoked about putting out as a single because it is an absolute monster. It's called Tequila. <laughs> Not the same song. Completely different song. That's and he's amazing. like, oh, he's like, oh, really? And he's kind of, I'm like thinking like his reaction's kind of strange but okay whatever long story short it comes out that his wife had written this song for dan and shay called tequila it's their next single and i'm like mf are you <laughs> kidding me it doesn't even matter that it's a completely different song the yeah. fact that the same title just for you can forget it. in my forget wife it. it's Back still one of my board. favorite it's one of my wife's favorite songs i've ever had on on hold she's like you still have to cut this song i'm like I got to give it more time. It's been yeah, too yeah. soon. Like, but it is. A we could just really throw people for monster a loop. song. We got to throw people for a loop, and we gotta we gotta cut it with you. And it's just you know, Dan and Shay featuring go. Justin Moore. It's called Tequila, and they're, hey, they're thinking like, seriously, Whoa, if I sent you this, if, song. if I sent you this song, you'd be like, holy cow, that's a monster. You gotta like, send it to me. I want to hear it. Yeah, I'll send it to you. That's but so funny, man. I anyway, never heard that story. I, I haven't thought about that until you just said tequila. And I'm like, oh, I still wish I put that song out. He's, but I couldn't. He's going to go down a couple of shots of tequila after remembering <laughs> yeah. that. No, yeah. it's, it's funny how that happens all the time, man. It's like, yeah, a, it does. you know, you'll have song titles that are, you know, are just for whatever written. It, and it's not like anyone heard the next song. No. Obviously, that happens sometimes, too. No. But, like, you don't even know. And it's just whatever's going on in the atmosphere that day where it just – that right. whole week there's like four songs that are have the same title and they're all great you know it's just kind of it's crazy how that happens camera <laughs> yeah after go over here get him straight just you get him well i've got a camera set up which the people watching will know it's been going like this because he's over there playing <laughs> underneath the tripod <laughs> hey i'd say this the girls are all shy about getting on here that joker is not shy even at shows oh, yeah. jay he the girls just always wants to get up maybe you know come acknowledge a song or something he'll you know uh, says for them or something they won't come on stage for nothing this guy is at sound check with his little microphone where am i going the only time i've seen him cry on the road is when he couldn't go on stage when dad was that's working. amazing well you got that's the yeah. ones you gotta you gotta that's following in your footsteps there man and it's the uh, people always ask me if I want my kids to like, Oh, you think they'll fall in your footsteps? And I'm like, first of all, my kids can do, and I think they can do whatever they want to do, you know, but it always scares me. We're just like, my God, I hope they're good. You know, <laughs> they're yeah. good. cause yeah. if your kid's horrible, you got to tell your kids that they're horrible. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> yeah. terrifying. And you don't want to do that. No, you can't right. do that. You know, you just gotta be like, yeah, right. man, I think it's, you know, and you got to set up all these meetings like guys, if you just wouldn't mind just for today, you know, be nice about it. You know, be nice about <laughs> right, it. right, right, right. 
So, hey, what's uh, what's coming up next year? Are you guys getting back out there full <coughs> force touring? Stuff? Yeah, man. We've uh, so we've got we coming up on the the last four shows, I guess, of the uh, of the whole tour for the arena tour, and we do. I think it's Detroit, yep. Hershey, and uh, Newark, Newark, and, and Boston. Boston. We end in yes. Boston, so that's a fun. Uh, it'll be a fun four shows, and uh, but next year, man, I'm excited. We're going out with Kenny Chesney, uh, and we're doing stadiums, and so awesome. it's going to be that's going to be a fun thing for us. And you don't get those opportunities to go out on because when you start headlining, and Justin, you know what this is like. You've been headlining forever now, and it's it's kind of fun to be able to go back and to do you know, that opening, especially when you're, you know, doing a, a stadium tour with someone that you really admire, like, I mean, he's on right. my Mount Rushmore, you know, so right. getting to go out and watch the shows again, I miss that. I miss getting yeah. to go and play and I'm sneaking out to front of house and just having myself a time. Cause that's and just, that was always one of the funnest on your, on your shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. That direct yes. support slots where it's at. Wasn't that Darius told you that one time, Justin? Yeah. So years ago I was on the road with it was a Brad Paisley tour. I was opening act, and then Darius was middle act, and um, and then obviously Brad and and Darius is like, dude, this is where it's at. Uh, just a few buses, two or three trucks. You play your fifty minutes, hour long set, whatever it is. It's all hits, and then you get to watch the show, chill yes. out. <laughs> And at the, the time, I'm thinking to my, at the time, I'm thinking to myself, no, nah, man, I want my name up there and I want all this and that and the, this. And and then you go pay for it all, <laughs> as you well know. And you're like, yeah, he was right. Uh, you know, that was probably 10 uh, yeah. years ago. And I'm going, damn, he was he was spot on, man. You know, it is funny how you, you think but, that it's, you know, there's new things that come with you know, the pressure of having to you know be the headliner where you're like, man, I hope that. You, you right. got to sell the tickets. You got to, exactly. even if you have help from the people, it all comes down on you, you know, if right. you don't sell the tickets. So you're always, there's yeah. that pressure. It's and, like being the quarterback in the SEC. You get all the credit <laughs> when you don't deserve it. And you get uh, all of the, uh, the negative, all the blame, <laughs> all, all the, the blame. blame when, when you probably don't deserve it all. But uh, all that being said, uh, if you're looking for, once you finish this stadium tour with Chesney, if you're looking for a middle act with a lot of hit records, uh, <laughs> yeah, there you there's go. Arkansas boy here. Uh, oh, jo Joe Nichols is available. <laughs> yeah. huh? is there, Joe Nichols is available? That would be incredible. <laughs> no, that no be I think he's out man. already with should. somebody. Yeah, we I just saw he's, he's booked all next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no. no hey i want to i know we got to get you out of here we've, we've been on here a while definitely appreciate your time brother look forward to seeing you in person sooner than later on tour with you or at a at a festival show or something Hopefully absolutely we'll do one sooner or later but i got one more thing i got to do before we get out of here that we do every episode is the on your birthday which you've got one coming up at the end of this month so uh, happy early birthday uh we do a number one song in country music on the day you were born so oh. for myself, I'm a 9-11-1979 model. The, song, the number one song in country music that day was Conway Twitty's I May Never Get to Heaven. Justin is a 330-84 model. His song was Roll On 18-Wheeler by Alabama. And does anybody want to take a stab at what December 27th, 1991, what the number one song in the country was and by who? And I'll give you all a hint. Ironically, it's a pretty successful duo. Um, let's see. Justin Moore and Shay Mooney, all I want for Christmas. Is that, was that, that come out around then? We got to wait for the technology to catch up where we can go back in time and release it, but that will be a hit. So it was in 91? Yep, this is 91. This is your birthday. What was, or your, the day you were born, the day you came onto this earth. And this is a, this, is this a country duo? This is, is the, this the number one country of? song in, in the country on well, the I'm going to just have to guess, let's see, around that time. Brooks and Dunn, probably. It was a Brooks and Dunn song. That's what take I heard, yeah. What the song what was? Song? Uh, 91. Um, when did... Ronnie sings it. Ronnie sings it. Ne Neon Moon? No, sir. Josh, want to take a stab? Brand New Man. My Next Broken Boots Heart. Boogie. Really? My, next, My next, broken next Broken Heart. I knew it was... A, that, that was their first album because that yep. was when they came out was 91, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. So... So they was um, well. What a, they were uh, just. I'll take they that. were just after the class of ninety or eighty nine. 
Right. Which was Garth and all those guys. But so yeah, that's a pretty ironically, good, that's a pretty good one. Yeah, a, a real good one on a duo for a, for a, a half of a duo. I mean, maybe it, it maybe it all made sense. sense. Maybe they didn't it know then how much sense. it was. I mean, especially now it with does. the name of the song. With the name of the song, my mom was like, well, "This is my next broken heart." Well, yep. it's a, it's, it yeah, is a love song. I'm working on my next broken heart. You know, it, it's it's in the love song vein. Yet, what you hang your hey. hat on. So there you go. Justin, that might be, uh, you know, that sounds, we always talk about songs that, that were big that you could recut. You know, I feel like it, the time has passed, you know, that yeah, sounds pretty good. A, yeah, yeah, maybe that be honest one. Tequila's a little soon, but. Tequila's uh, a little fresh. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Hey, brother, um, in all sincerity, uh, thanks so much for spending so much time with us. I know you got a, a thousand things you could be doing, and uh, it was really good catching up with you, even though it wasn't in person um, uh, this this past weekend. Uh, it was it was good to talk to you uh, yeah, via text so many times, et cetera, and glad you had a great weekend. Glad our Hogs won, and um, I'll be at the bowl game. I don't know if you'll have an opportunity to go, but we're going to Florida for a bowl game. Uh, what, what, when's the, what, when is it? It'll be somewhere between New Year's Eve and it'll be somewhere between like the 30th and the 2nd. Uh, I'm guessing. Let me, let me text my, my ticket connect. Uh, I'll hit you up right after. <laughs> I'm texting <laughs> Hey man, I'm hey, trying to go to this bowl game. Hey, let no, me that know. Awesome, let me know. Man. I'd love but, to go. Yeah. I'm going to take, take my wife. And so it'd be fun to connect if, if you happen to be able to make it, uh, make yeah, it that'd down. be a blast. But, I'd uh, love to, I'd love to take but, Hannah down there for that. She'd love it. Weather would be nice. Super, Should be super, super proud for you guys, and you in particular, uh, as an as a fellow Arkansas and a Razorback. And uh, man, I, I really genuinely mean it. I, I have a ton of respect for you as an artist. And and um, he's going. Can someone come please wipe me? Uh, give Good me a boy. second, son. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> But uh, just in for all seriousness, everyone listening, it's a, he wasn't talking about me. He was talking about his son. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no one's coming to wipe. Serious, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to wipe Shay. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, though, man, really, really happy for you and all the success and continued success. And uh, nobody's more deserving. I mean, you, 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 supremely talented and and a really, really, genuinely down to earth, great, great person. And and. Uh, uh, thanks for representing our our uh, beloved home state in the way that you do, and hopefully we'll get a chance to hang soon in person, man. And I appreciate it, man. Seriously, that's uh, it's always nice. I think the the greatest blessing that we can have in uh, this country music world that we have is is good people, and I and then you're one of those guys, and I've always respected you for that. And it's awesome that we've gotten to to know each other over the last little bit, and uh, looking forward to. To doing it some more, man. I'll definitely. I'd like to go to that bowl game, so I'll, I'll text you. But seriously, thanks for for having me on, buddy. And you know, I'll always be a big fan of obviously your music, but even bigger fan of you. And appreciate what you do and how you represent Arkansas as well. And so, thanks for having me on, man. Anytime you guys got an open slot, I'll be around. Thanks, awesome. buddy. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, brother. Man. Yeah, y'all right, make boys. sure to go. Y'all go check Shay out at Shay Mooney on Instagram, danandshay.com. You can catch all the tour dates, all their new music. Go to go to anywhere you listen to music and hit that new single and the uh, and the new Christmas jam while it's out. As Dan mentioned earlier, or excuse me, Shay mentioned earlier, Dan and Shay will be in Detroit December 3rd, <laughs> uh, Hershey December 4th, uh, Newark, New Jersey December 5th, and at the Garden uh, December 7th in Boston. So y'all go check them out, get you some tickets while they last. And uh, yeah, appreciate you, brother. We'll see you next time. We love to have you back on next season. Maybe we'll talk basketball basketball when basketball season gets to the end or something like that but thank you buddy tell there everybody we, we said hello and uh we'll help see you on the road soon brother you got it boys love y'all see you soon see you, see you buddy all right everybody that was shay mooney man how good good call good call on getting him on today just he that was a great convo I, I enjoyed talking to him i know we've talked a bunch you know at shows and in passing at events and stuff but that's the longest i've ever got to chit chat with him and I, I knew some of his story but really it's always better to hear the from the from the horse's mouth per se and uh yeah what a nice guy i mean just couldn't be more down to earth and uh uh very cool convo i enjoy i enjoy that yeah i did too man he, he's a as you mentioned and i mentioned and uh he's a really good guy uh, and a singing and, sung gun like you said yeah, watch out yeah, that he's really sing. really a good singer and and um you know i thought the most interest or not the most but, but an interesting part of the conversation is him addressing kind of like the whole we're not country enough kind of deal and you know i think a lot of our fans maybe listening right now um you know 
if you're fans of me, a lot of times you may not be fans of Dan and Shay. You know, let's just be honest. I mean, maybe I'm sure there are some, but you you might be one or the other. Right. And, Could and be. By, yep. You know, you you might be fans of theirs and not mine because I'm too country. They're not enough country or vice versa or whatever. And I just think it's cool to hear people's stories because I think yep. it it maybe provides some some uh, some inside information there where you may go, well, you know what, I I didn't dig Justin's music, but after I hear his story, maybe I'll dig in a little deeper. Or, you know, in in their case, you know, I don't know, I wasn't really a fan of that, but now that I've heard him, he's a great dude, and they're their work ethic and all that you know i'm gonna go yeah. dig a little deeper and maybe you you find a um uh, a reason why you like their stuff a little more or my yeah. stuff i mean right I, you know what i mean or like, it could be even or it could be even as easy as like you may not even ever gave somebody a chance some of your buddies right. might have told before right. you even got a chance to hear it your buddies or your peers all were oh uh, you know negative about it so you just jumped on that train and never really got right. the chance to listen and then once you do you're like what was they talking about? This yeah. is good. I, I, yeah, I dig this. What are you talking about? Right, um, and you always say it too, man. I mean, there's, there's, um, there's different, and again, I can include myself in this. So it's not a a, a traditional country versus uh, pop country thing at all. Right. But yeah, we're all one big country that, world. That's, that's why all I include is. I include myself in that. Maybe you you're like ah, he's too hillbilly for me, and then you hear hear me speak, and you go well okay well, let me give this a shot you know yeah. or again vice versa but i think at times um we're all guilty of that you know and oh, yeah. not giving somebody a chance like you said and yeah. you always say this too you're like man i like different types of music for different settings yeah. you know if it's i want to soundtrack if to I your life party, yeah. yeah if i want to party i want to hear hank jr if i want to chill out i want to hear frank sinatra or right. you know whatever I exactly mean, yeah, if you got to get pumped up, you might want to listen to some hard hip hop or some metal music yeah, if metal you're lifting weights or whatever, yeah, or something. If that's if that situation in your day, I mean, you know, that's why I always it's the soundtrack to your life. It's like if, yeah. if your life's a movie, you know, what's the background music going on in your movie? Sometimes it's silent, sometimes it's uh, you know, different stuff. But but yeah, I, I thought it was great. And I I like some of their stuff. You know, it's uh, I've been listening to them for a long time, and I I got no qualms with any of their stuff. I mean, it's uh, you know, it is what it is. Like he said, it's that's what they were going for. They kept original. It works, obviously. There you go. So again, you know, I I just respect thousands thousands who, of screaming females can't be wrong. You know, what yeah, I mean? millions. Well, <laughs> yeah, right, brother. millions, brother. But no, I I just respect what he said, and I told him this is, is you know be whatever you are. Yep. He and Dan are not beta hook. Right. But I have respect for him because they didn't go cut beta hook. Right. They're, you know that is them. who I am. But I didn't go cut you know whatever song you want to plug into theirs because that ain't me right and so i respect the uh authenticity of what they're doing and absolutely they're, they're being what they are and and you know if you're real hey i can respect it regardless of what it what it is and so yep. and they're again they're incredibly talented that's it the talent shines through i can remember saying that same thing i can remember when i first got in the business well when I first got back to nashville and was around some label stuff and was around some uh, some acts and, and and would 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 hear someone back home or you know uh, that was on the fringes of it you know try to put somebody down just because you know but usually it turns because they're jealous is why somebody wants jealousy, to put somebody yeah, down exactly yeah. or or intimidated but try to put somebody down and I, I can remember a couple of the I mean some of the biggest uh, uh, groups that are you know uh, 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 we call it dual gender, you know, boys and girls in the same band. There's, a, you know, there's obviously a couple of huge right. one of those been for a while. And I can remember people talking smack about one of them in particular uh, outside. I'm thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, because they, they were assuming I was just going to jump on the train. Yeah, that's not that shouldn't be on country. And I'm like, guys, I was just at a Christmas party last week for the record label, and everybody got to get up there and sing one acapella or a couple of songs acapella each. You know, just just stripped down. You know the reason those guys are on the radio? I saw it last week because they have more talent than any of you guys talking smack put right. together. That's why they're successful because they have talent. I mean, you have to have all the other stuff. You, if you have talent, you still may not make it. Uh, right. But to really make it and do it the right, we have to have talent. You watch them do it, and you're like, yeah, you can talk all you want, but when it comes down to the brass tacks of can they sing and can they play, 
check, check. That's why they got right. it. You know, that, that's, right. that's the way it works. And I love what he was saying. I, I, and I, I'm sure some people are new to hearing that too. I didn't. I knew there probably was a yin and a yang, but it's neat to know that Shay's the singing part. That's his yeah. spot in there, and Dan's taking care of this, and then he does the rest. You know, give each other credit. It was awesome, man. Yeah, I'm glad he came on, and hopefully, uh, we'll have a big long. Uh, Razorback and Roll Tide basketball season, uh, and we can get him back on and talk about us when we get to the, uh, you know, to the big dance. Hopefully, in a couple months. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're both ranked really high and doing well, and um, you know, I think have really good teams. I mean, we had we both had really good teams last year. You guys won the tournament and the uh, SEC uh, regular season, and so um, just reloaded. Had a, had a few guys come back. We're kind of in the same boat. We didn't. Um, uh, you know, we lost some folks, but we had had some transfer in, we recruited some, and um, so yeah, I think it's gonna be fun. I, I think um, I don't know if you've watched Duke at all, but uh, oh yeah, you and I watched Duke have, in Kentucky oh, earlier in the year, and I've watched him a me, few since. Duke is was Duke is ranked number one right now. I think they're the best team. I, I think them and Kansas as blue bloods are back. Kentucky's better this year than last year. I don't think they're quite where they've been. Uh, I think the SEC is up for grabs. I think it's between us, y'all, Kentucky, and Florida's playing really good right now. Yeah, yeah. Duke and beat kind of unexpected. Uh, Duke beat UConn. <laughs> I watched that game the other day, and um, even with Bancaro having the cramping issues again, which is crazy. I don't know why he keeps having cramping issues. He had twenty points in the first half, and he didn't play yeah, much. You know, he's special. And that they still special. won decisively. Won against um, against your boy Timmy and the and the uh, Zags up there. Um, yep. Yeah, it was Gonzaga's yep. who I meant, not UConn. But yeah, they 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 look tough. I mean, uh, but I, going back to us, yeah, I, I I'm thoroughly enjoying watching some Bama hoops right now. You know, knock on wood, cross my fingers. Looks like we finally got a true seven foot center that's going to work out. You know, me, I always I always feel like we're undersized. I feel like to go, we we need mm -hmm. a big we need a, you need a rim protector uh, and a and a low post score. Uh, in in tourney play, uh, and you don't always have to, but I like ha for me because that's what I, the way I like to play, and I right. think we've got it now. Even even if you don't have a guy who can, you can throw it into on the low block and 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 count on a bucket or free throws. Having with the way, especially you guys play, because y'all are all threes and layups. Yep. Um, it, it, which that's the theory that your coach uh, believes in, which is a lot of it being analytical you know yep. he goes by the analytics <clears throat> you know how do you win the most amount of games etc <clears throat> and even if he's just a rim runner for y'all and he can exactly he can and a rebound hoops and put backs put back, rebounds yep. in transition and also just protecting the rim yep. you know if, if somebody gets somebody's uh you know trying to guard the ball and they get beat and the help ain't there quick enough you got that guy back there as the backstop, you know, yep. uh, the the last line of defense, and and y'all definitely have that. We got a couple of those guys this year. Um, we just moved into the top ten this week, which is which is cool, and um, and so yeah, looking forward to basketball for sure. Uh, On to the football, which we mentioned we were going to talk about a little yep. bit. Um, <clears throat> We, I was really proud, going back a couple of weeks, really proud of our effort against you guys at <laughs> Alabama. We didn't even talk about the game. We, I don't know if you got uh, to watch it or not. but I was listening to uh, it. I, of course, was working on my lawnmower again. You guys beat us 42-35, tightly contested game. I was really, really proud of our guys. and, and uh, Might have been a little home cooking, not going to lie. There was a couple of plays that they gave you guys a touchdown near the end that was clearly not a touchdown. Not going to blame it on the officials, but um, but it was a really good game, and I was proud of us because uh, you know in years past that game's been fifty two to six, right. more times than not. Stop, son. Oh yeah, y'all were um, up. Y'all had y'all had me scared, no doubt. Y'all were up. I I just I was listening, and and um, yeah, it was it was back and forth. Um, yeah, I mean, and and going and I want to say that on the refs. Dude, they have turned into weathermen. They are 50-50. We They're got terrible. All, we have got They're all terrible. these angles and all these cameras and all these officials into this and that, and they, it seems like they get more wrong than they used to. Even after they review them, they still I, get them wrong. I swear. Which is incredible. So, the the play I'm talking about in particular was, I don't know if you saw it on replay, 
But so they go replay this, and I'm like, oh, okay. Well, the, well they're definitely going to overturn this. So right. it was a third down and 10, I believe, or 12 for you guys at like, I don't know, our 40, 45 yard line, something like that. Well, y'all just go deep, which y'all had burn us deep all day. We were playing three deep in a zone, and y'all's dudes, Williams and Mechie, would just run by us. Even three deep. Three deep. That, that, that should never happen ever. Put your feet, put your heels on the on the goal line if, right. if you got to. Right. And y'all just ran past us all day. Boom, 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 boom. As a matter of fact, uh, Bryce Young had a career day. Yes, yeah, I mean, stupid. Just, it was crazy. He had almost 600 yards passing. He had mo- more, most passing yards of any Alabama quarterback ever. Yeah. And we held y'all to like, I don't know, 70 yards rushing or something. Right. And so 559 like, okay. in the air, which but is it was crazy. Some crazy something crazy. in the air. So, anyway, so this particular play, y'all were up six. If y'all don't get this first down, y'all would punt because it was too far to, um, to kick a field goal. And it was – too many yards to to fake it or any or go for it. So they throw deep in the back of the end zone to I forget which kid it was. Might have been Williams. Um who by the way insane. is out for the first half of the Georgia game, which is not cool. No, because he went out in the first half of the Alabama game, so you just have to have two halves. He had both halves. So that first counts half, as a half? Yep. So he'll be uh-huh. back. Oh, okay, good to know. Good to know. Yeah, so that'll be good because he's a, he's a big time factor for y'all. Absolutely. Um, even though y'all had people step up the next week, which we'll get to the Auburn game, but so he's bobbling the ball in the back of the end zone. Um, of course, he beats our our <laughs> our safety or whatever. He's bobbling it in the back of the end zone. When he finally uh, secures the the catch, he's out of bounds. They call it a touchdown on the field, which I don't know why, but they do. Okay, no big deal. And so they show the replay again two or three times, and I go, oh, thank God. He's out of bounds before he secures the catch. They go back, call stands, and I'm like, uh, uh, excuse me, I just watched it. it, it yeah. He was literally doing this number. But anyway, that, that ain't the reason we lost. We lost because we gave up almost 600 passing yards. But, <laughs> yeah. but you know, but um, – Anyway, I had to. I had but to, but yeah, uh, but that but that but that matters. But that matters, and they should get those right for everybody, for every team, every time as yeah, close as you can. For it everybody, should be, it should be a ninety-five percent rate instead of seventy or sixty, whatever it seems like it is yeah. on those calls. So, but fast forward to, um, and you guys know out there listening and watching, we we both root for each other, and there's really, I'm just picking at Jr. because he hell he didn't even watch it because he wasn't afraid of us. Um, <laughs> Uh, I had to get that lawnmower fixed, buddy. Had family coming. That. We but, just have different. Um, we just have different levels of 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 uh, importance on some things, but it, it is yeah. what it is. But um, bet your ass, I anyway, was glued this week. <laughs> so, so he was probably glued to my game, and I was glued to his game this week. Yep. You know, and so we went and took care of business against Missouri. Got that line we talked about baby. earlier. Yep, and then, um, and then. Uh, the Auburn Alabama game. I don't know if you guys watched, but there were a lot of great games on Saturday. This, but the LSU A and M game was great. Um, uh, the Alabama Auburn game though was just ridiculous. I mean, you guys struggled on offense uh, most of all day, all day. And get you know, give Auburn credit. I mean, they, they always have a really good defense, um, and. They were blitzing you guys like crazy, and your O-line is just not played up to the standard that you expect Alabama to play at, uh, you know, this season. And and uh, But at the end of the day, you guys got to go 90 – or no, yeah, 97, 98 yards and a minute and 40 seconds or something like that. And the thing is, had Tank Bigsby – the running back, who I believe is a senior for Auburn, had he stayed in bounds yeah. on the second down play when Auburn had the ball prior, the time would have theoretically ran out. There, you guys would have had maybe 20, 30 seconds or something like that. Instead, he gives you all like a minute 40 left to go 98 yards. And in my opinion, Bryce Young, who was leading in the Heisman 
race, I think, had his Heisman moment. He leads you guys down. You're down seven. You tie it with 20 seconds left, 15 seconds left, something like that, uh, on a 98-yard touchdown drive. And and y'all went in, I think, four overtimes four or some overtimes. stupid something. Crazy. So it was a great, great, great game. Great can't, game. Can't score all day. And then with minute and 40 left, time to turn it on. It is crazy how that works. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and being back home, I was in Mississippi watching it at my grandmother's. And, uh, yeah, I was threat. I was fretting it. I was like, well, good thing I got some clothes here because if we lose this game, I might be staying here for a while. I don't even want to go back to Alabama and have to deal with this anytime soon. Right. Uh, and, and just, I mean, that's what I always tell people about the Iron Bowl. It does not matter during the season if either one of us has won all our games or – won no games that game is going to be a good game and they have broke my heart so many times when we've been good set up to go do something great and then they come in and beat us with a you know on a 50 50 season uh and just thank goodness that it worked out for the good guys this time so one of your great friends is georgia fan yep, yep. and one of your other great friends is auburn fan yep Eason has not uh, responded to a text or phone call over the last uh, week. <laughs> so. And Grice is – oh, and Grice is chomping at the bit. But he also knows they've been in a good spot before. I'm just going to leave it there. They've been in a good, right. spot, to, they've been in a good spot to take the title before. So, yeah. you know, so, you, ain't the, you ain't the champ till somebody beats you. So, so, Grice is not talking smack. No, no. he He knows better. I don't talk, but you know me. I'm not a smack talker either. I only come back, and it's usually to my LSU buddies. It's down the bayou. Shout out to the Mark and Matt Bowman, you know, <laughs> Sid and all you guys. But uh, I don't talk smack. I, you know, I get a little. I might have a, get a little the sauce and start getting a little loud about Bama. Ain't but got I'm not, to. I, you let let uh, what seventeen, eighteen rings speak for themselves. <laughs> what I have to do it okay. <laughs> uh, but so what in all seriousness i just what, don't what you so about? i so people but so my friends know don't just my good friends don't jab at me because they know i don't jab at them and if, if somebody you know because i don't want it on a down year they don't want it on a down year so it's better just not to but boy we got a big game what i mean what are you thinking about it i mean have you watched georgia play yeah, they just steamrolled everybody. I mean, they just crushed their their rival Georgia Tech, which is not having as good a season as they normally would. But I, th uh, I think I think the line is we're an underdog for the first time, and I think it's like two hundred games. Seven and, I don't know seven and a half right now or something like that. Yeah, and, um, I like being the underdog. I can tell you, I do <laughs> like that. I will say this, um, and I'm I'm pulling for Alabama. Um, you know, our relationship plus. To all our Georgia fans out there listening, I'm sorry, but it's just kind of fun to watch Georgia, Georgia it. Georgia, uh, it just is. please Georgia. Arkansas always Arkansas's it, so it, it's nice to – and we do it on a much lesser scale. But I guess misery loves company. I don't know. But um, the but the Georgia guys jump – they always got – they throw a little jab I, at me as soon I as they were like, good this year. First game like they won, the, Stover's like texting me, boy, Georgia looks yeah. good this year. Watch out. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's the first game. I like game. the crap out of Kirby Smart, though. I will oh, say yeah. that, man. Yeah. Um, I don't hate but, Georgia. That's the other thing, too. That's no, not one of our rivals. I don't I'm, hate Georgia. I'm halfway picking. But, yeah. Uh, but I will say, if I'm, if I'm a betting man, like, Georgia's a better team this year. They just are. But I will never, ever – count saving out until you beat him i just it's hard for me to it's hard for me to go against him i mean you know i you know if i had if you made me put my house on it this particular year i'd probably pick georgia just because i think they're they're just a much better team in my opinion all around but well, like you said their their offense defensive line is just that's they're just some of the they're best just ever. incredible yeah. i mean they really are I, here's here's the one thing i will say <clears throat> You guys, here's what I was banking on in the SEC championship. And this is getting super technical. So, for those out there who love this podcast but hate when we talk sports, you might want to jump off here because this is technical. But if you like sports, you'll you'll understand this. I always banked on you guys this year outscoring Georgia in a shootout. You know, you guys go score 50 points or whatever, and, you know, hopefully they can't keep up. Their defense is better than y'all. We know that. Y'all's defense is not bad, by the way. It's just not – Georgia's ridiculous. Um, but I always have thought 
that their offense hasn't been in a position, and I believe this to be true still, they've not been put in a position to where they have to go score points to win win the games. Um, They just haven't because they've held people to – I don't know if they've given up more than seven or ten points all year. Doesn't seem Uh, like it, no. It's insane. But um, what makes me nervous is that LSU – and Auburn held you guys down offensively. I thought y'all could just go score against anybody. So that makes me a little nervous. You know, my theory of y'all outscored them, now I'm getting a little nervous about it because y'all's O-line has been a little shaky. Yep. So hopefully, you know, y'all can sure some things up and and maybe theoretically what I'm hoping for will – come to fruition i don't know what were you were your thoughts uh, well i just gotta hope that after after <clears throat> oh, an iron bowl win, and i used to i thought we used to take two weeks off for the sec championship has it always been one week it's always the next week i think it is the next week but it I is this year i know because it's the games this weekend this Saturday. yeah I, I thought it was always the next okay, week okay maybe I could i'm be wrong, wrong but um but we definitely could use to get some some guys back healthy. But um, I just got to say, it's just like going into the half on a score. I just got to think that, you know, I don't think we blew all of our wind out of our sails. You know, that was all we had going to having to go, having to go beat Auburn. Um, I hope it's just the momentum going into this game. I hope that's the momentum because it seemed like, you know, I've said this about you guys some years, just seems like nobody's bouncing around. Everybody's walking back the huddle with their arms just kind of hanging down. Everybody just kind of looks, you know, there's no pep. There's no fire, you know, and I felt like we didn't have any of that until uh, one big defensive play on the series prior to that. Um, kind of set the tone. You start seeing people getting fired up and then we, you know, held them and, I think that I'm hoping that momentum transfers into this week. I hope that just was a positive note. Like, okay, we're back. Okay, let's roll. Now, we, you know, let's, it's, we're going to get it clicking because it seems like we just, you know, with the line and I mean, we we can't snap the ball right. We, I mean, just it just everything. It seems like everything's going wrong. You know, penalties. Uh, just seems like we're not as focused, and it's, I'm not saying they're not, but it just seems like they're just not clicking like we have in years past. Well, maybe that was the wake up call we needed against Auburn. Um, to going into the championship game, the wake-up call, and now we are clicking. That's that's all I can hope for. It would but, just be so fun to watch because everybody's picking Georgia. Everybody's oh yeah. picking Georgia by 10, 14 points, by the way, mm-hmm. um, in a route, which would be unheard of uh, for Alabama. But uh, So I'm just like hoping like uh, you guys can – I don't know if shock the world, maybe overstating it, but – Kind of. I mean, like, I'm thinking, like, it would be just – it would be, be so awesome. And and, um, and you said it. I mean, if I think if anybody's got a shot, we do. And um, I think this game yep. is going to be as good a game as you're going to have. Outside teams, you know, so Ohio State fall, Michigan won. You know, you got these other ones creeping up. But I, I still think Bama and Georgia is the best two teams in the country. I hate to say this. I don't know if you watched it or not. I really hate saying this. And you're going to hate hearing it. Michigan can play. Yeah. They're good. They look like a SEC. They look like Alabama when Alabama was dominant running the ball. Interesting. Prior to them going with the air raid stuff. they're Dude, their guy had like, I don't know, high hundred yards rushing – and like six or seven rushing touchdowns. Wow! Against Ohio State, I mean, some so, something astronomical. So who else? And their is defense left? is stout. So who else is left? Michigan. Michigan uh, wins their end. Obviously, Georgia's in whether they win or lose to you guys. Yep. Um, as of right now, Cincinnati's in, which Cincinnati. I will say I'll go on record and say I don't agree with. If Arkansas, for example, had Cincinnati's schedule this year, Arkansas would be undefeated. Right. Just going. That's just the facts. I yep. mean, sorry. And I know you can only play who's on your schedule, but if your schedule is a high school schedule, you don't get in the playoffs, in my opinion. But they've got them there, so we'll see. Uh, if Oklahoma State wins the Big 12 against Baylor, they'll be in. And they should be, in my opinion, because there will be a one-loss Big 12 team who's beaten a handful of really good teams. 
you know, they're not an SEC schedule, but they're certainly more than Cincinnati. The really interesting one is if somebody gets beat, Notre Dame is sitting there at number five. They're ready to slide right into the playoff without a head coach. I was going to say, and as we record this, 7 a.m. this morning, their coach – tweet or text his guys to have a meeting I this mean, morning we, can you i wouldn't imagine? go to that meeting first off but having a meeting this morning say he's out can coach o's imagine? coach o just coach o just texted me he said he just to win a national championship yeah and you're leaving and i have to take off yeah crazy like, what i just got a text from coach o he said everything's good down in destin he's uh, officially moved into the house next door to you so can't wait yeah, to see you. Did you, you in the see holidays. that? By the way, yeah. he said oh. he was going to pack up and go to Destin with his oh, girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, and, and literally did. like an, literally like an hour later, my somebody sent me a picture and it was him and some chicks on the beach. Yeah, you know, he was already yeah, posted three, up. Yeah, three, three of yeah. them posted up, baby. You know how coach. Are o you rolls. the one that sent me that uh, that meme of uh, uh, Alabama with uh, Kelly Brian Kelly, or was that somebody else? Uh uh-uh. Said uh, I'll paraphrase here, but it said something to the effect of. Um, uh, and by the way, I think Brian Kelly's a really good coach, but if you can't do it against a weak schedule that Notre Dame plays, you're about to get knocked around in the SEC, brother, week, week in, week out, in yeah. my opinion. But it said something to the effect. It said uh, Brian Kelly loved uh, Nick Saban beating his ass so much ever like four years. He wanted it to go go down every year. <laughs> and and I, I no, I sent you the one of Saban with the uh, with the <laughs> yeah all looking great. old yeah after the game, but no yeah, yeah. crazy uh, turn of events. Everybody mm-hmm. thought Lincoln Riley was going to LSU. He goes to USC for an astronomical contract, and uh, then the coach from uh, was it La Tech or uh, uh, the Raging Cajuns goes to Florida. Uh, and then they were just kind of stuck out there. And then here comes Brian Kelly leaving Notre Dame, coming to LSU. Crazy. crazy Lincoln Riley crazy. didn't want that smoke, but Brian Kelly said he did. So, good luck to him. I mean, why? Well, I, why would you do that? I mean. I, I don't get it. That's what, And, and like I said, uh, it, it's not like you're on a down year and, you know, so you, maybe some sanctions are coming or something. Maybe some sanctions will be coming. Could, they literally could be in the playoff a week from – or, you know, like five days from now, they could be in the playoff, and he's already said he will not coach it That's if crazy. they are, which is crazy. Here's what it says. Uh, I found it. Brian Kelly leaves a team who can easily make the playoffs every year for a team who has to go through the whole SEC first. No, that wasn't it. It was something else. It was something about Saban. He didn't get enough of Saban beating him every four or five years. He wanted it every year or something. I'll, you know, it's, it's going to be a weird year next, you know, the next couple years bringing in Texas and Oklahoma and these coaching changes. And, man, my God, the money and the go back to what we said, contracts don't mean nothing because people will cut them and buyouts and this and that. I mean, it's just so crazy. And the money has just gotten, I mean, out of hand. Crazy. It really well, is. I, I saw a meme earlier, too. It, it took a year to go from, you know, a million to – Two million and or uh, a million to five million for head coaches per year, and then it took like another year for it to go from five to ten million per year. I mean, just yeah. crazy. It just gets. I hear and Lincoln I Riley's his is more like twelve million a year. Yeah, or some one hundred ten one hundred ten million dollars private jet bought both his houses paid over bought him a new five million dollar house yeah. out there. I mean, just crazy. The money they'll yeah. throw at this stuff. I mean, that no. tells you how big of a deal it still is as, as collegiate athletes. Hopefully, well, all these TV dollars, man. That's it. And I think, honestly, I don't know Riley, but he he probably made a pretty wise business decision. I mean, I wouldn't. You couldn't pay me enough to live in L.A. No offense to anybody out there listening, um, but you guys know it's a little crazy out there. But um, and obviously is evident by the mass exodus taking place but uh and the taxes uh but um you know i mean to play it to play that schedule want, to play usc he can all go the be resources in the playoff every single year yeah, and all he's got to do is get his resources. team he's got to get his team to, to get up for oregon one game a year and you know maybe a washington if they get a good coach or stanford or something maybe stanford yeah. maybe but that's yeah. it 
I yep. mean, that's it. Yep. And just, yep. I, I He didn't want that SEC smoke. That was evident. Mm-mm. He, he you know, So, Mm-mm. anyway, it'll be an interesting uh, so. next couple years, an interesting uh, week. By the time we talk again next week for the podcast, we will know who the SEC champion is. So, I'll say good luck to uh, all the players on both teams, Alabama. Uh, and Georgia. Hope it's a good game. Nobody gets hurt and uh, roll tide. So, um, so yeah, I guess we'll wrap that up. Just I know we got to get out of here. We've been on here forever today. It's been fun. I've enjoyed it. We hadn't. That's what happens when you and I don't talk. We got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, I wanted yeah. to take a few minutes here though to do something we had talked about a few weeks ago or months ago uh, about a. Um, and I still want everybody to please, uh, you know, like, comment, uh, like, rate, subscribe, leave a comment uh, for the podcast anywhere you listen to it. Uh, Please watch it on YouTube as well. Uh, tell your friends about it. But I know we had mentioned we were going to have someone who left a comment or a review for the podcast. We were going to let them jump on the podcast next week and send them to a show next year uh, on us. So I want to go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and announce who we picked to do that. I'm going to announce one now. This is and the, next week is the last episode of the year. We got two more. We're going to do one next week, okay. and then we're going to have the week before Christmas. We're going to have Cody on to do a wrap up. Um, season finale um, and stuff. And may have some special guests. I don't know yet. Cody and I were talking about that earlier. Um, but so for so when this comes out, if this is you, let me know because we want to have you on next week's podcast. I'll send you a Zoom machine link. Uh, you can jump on, chop it up f- with us for a little while, and then uh, we'll make sure to swap info. We'll get you to a show next year. Been a lot of great ones. I was reading through these the past couple of days, figuring out um, – uh, you know who we're going to use and which ones have been so many greats thanks everybody for all the kind words we appreciate y'all um uh, it's a common uh thread on here i've noticed is uh everybody uh sure liked uh, kate and um thinks it was funny as hell her catching you under your desk asleep uh, one of those in season one that's that's that never gonna let you live that one ago, down. Okay? <laughs> never gonna let you live that one down apparently uh podcast gold uh, so, but I thought we'd pick one out here, and there's so many good ones. Uh, it's it's really it's really hard. I wish we could just have everybody on here. We may do that. So I want everybody to keep sending those in because I we're, we'll do this again at some point. I'm sure we may do it from time to time next year. Just have uh, one of you guys or gals on uh, to chop it up with us um, and and see what's going on in y'all's world and um, that kind of stuff. So this is the one I picked. Um, and if and if I don't hear from you by you know. Uh, Saturday or Sunday, um, we'll I'll send one out and we'll get somebody else to jump in and fill the slot. But uh, as of now, this is the one, and in the, the it is titled "Take a Peek Behind the Curtain." Um, and I'll read what, what what they put on here. I'm not sure if it's a guy or a girl. Uh, the name used was Casey Pintar. K C P I N E T A R. This was on October 31st. If you are Casey Pintar and left me this message uh, or a review on the podcast. Um, page there uh, be sure to go to jrthehandler.com or go on instagram at jrthehandler and send me a message let me know that was you and we'll make sure to link up and i'll get you all set up for the show next week again that's kc pintar um it, it reads it was pretty cool and, and there's all of them were great uh for the majority um but I, I thought this one was just one i randomly picked out of a bunch I, so Take a peek behind the curtain. JM and JR take the listener behind the scenes of a life of an established country superstar and his handler. After a few episodes, you find out real quick there's no different. They're no different from the rest of us. From JM's wife Kate yelling at him to get up after passing out under his desk to the latest episode of JM and JR gorging themselves on catered cobbler and Mexican food while watching Ted Lazo. This podcast never disappoints. I look forward to each week for a new episode to drop so I can hear from my buddies that I've never met, by the way. Also, you can't beat getting some everyday wisdom from Mr. Charlie Daniels at the end of each podcast. I look forward to meeting you both someday on the road. Until then, keep up the great work. So, Casey Pintar, appreciate your, uh, you sending that in there. You hadn't met us yet, but you're about to, buddy. So, hit me up, and let's have you on the podcast next week, awesome. and then uh, we'll have you at a show next year. So, mm-hmm. South, say, KC. KC. Pintar. Pintar. Say it all together. KC Pintar. KC Pintar. All right, there you, there you go. go. Hit us up. We'll have you on. Appreciate y'all all doing that. Uh, continue to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast anywhere you interact with us on social media. Um, I've had a good time today, Just. I want to I want to uh, say one more time about those dates we announced. There's the pre-sale code is out today. That is Tucson on March 12th in Prescott Valley on March 13th of 2022. Uh, use the uh, pre-sale code MORE22 to get the uh, the deal on the tickets there. Go ahead and let's fill that thing up. And uh, we'll have more of that as the next couple of weeks go on as well. We've got a lot of cool tour stuff. I know we were talking 
talking earlier about one of our favorite uh, fellow uh, country music stars and uh, internet personalities, I guess you'd say these days, just a hell of a guy. Uh, and, former and outfit. guest gonna, on the podcast. Yeah, going to gonna be out on the road with us some next year, so pumped about telling everybody about that. And uh, you got the new vinyl pre-sale still going on. We need everybody to get on the great Justin's Greatest Hits vinyls. It'll be a Walmart uh, next year. Um, all kinds of cool stuff, man. I'm, yeah, I'm with a woman you love is the newest single out there on yes. radio. Yes, so with a woman you love rocking up the charts. We're check that out. To- Go download it. Uh, stream it. If you haven't heard that. And new album will be coming early next year. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, with the woman you love, great song for Christmas uh, or New Year's dancing with your lady. And if you're a cover band, great one to learn um, to play on those if you want to get some folks dance. I tell you what's funny, I was at a uh, a little restaurant bar the other day, and they had the, a little three-piece act up. And um, they were just, I mean, they could tell they were, you know, just doing it for fun, it seemed like, because they were reading off a little, you know, iPad doing songs and uh, uh uh, the girl started doing Why We Drink, and you can tell she'd never heard it before. I don't know if somebody requested or what. There wasn't many people at this little place. They were Teresa's family, and they were like, are you hear that? I'm like, I, it, was, it was an Asian lady, and I couldn't I barely make out what she was saying. Then I wrote, oh, but it wasn't the right cadence. You know, it was just she was That's reading funny. it off the thing, trying to say I thought, that was random. I'm looking around like, is somebody messing with me? You know, but That's anyway. So that was a good like, one. I'm trying to get away from that music. Yeah, that's that's what I thought. I was like, if somebody is, y'all know that's terrible. If a guy, if an artist walks in, don't play their stuff on the radio because they don't want to hear. It. Not that I'm the artist, but I've like, you know, heard that one enough. But uh, every that's a good one to uh, with the woman you love be a great one for any band out there uh, to play if you got a New Year's Eve gig because I'm sure a lot of folks would dance and hug up to the one they love. Uh, I know I sure like it. It's a catchy tune and uh, yeah, looking forward to that one. Rise up the charts. Looking forward to a new record. Looking forward to a new tour going to be good times next year so again thanks everybody for tuning in this week thank you to our guest this week the wonderful shay moody um i mean what what a character he is uh great to have him on y'all go check him out at shay mooney on instagram dan uh go to justinmoremusic.com you can check out all of our tour dates that we do have out right now you can go find all that music of justin's we were talking about uh, all the cool stuff um going on in his world go to jrthehandler.com and check out uh, any of the podcast stuff i always put all the videos and links to all that stuff up there as well um and yeah i hope everybody had a happy thanksgiving and um getting ready for christmas it's here it's only a few weeks away yeah we're trying to get our christmas shopping done this week actually so uh to echo jr's thoughts uh, thank you guys for tuning in as always hopefully uh, you enjoyed today's episode with Shay. Uh, again, thanks to him for coming on. And uh, again, hopefully you had a great Thanksgiving. And we will talk to y'all next week on the Justin Moore Podcast. Uh, we'll see you then. Say, see ya. See you. Say, yeah. Hey. Say, uh, whack it up. Whack it up. <laughs> Bye, Bye, buddy. Bye, I love you. Bye, buddy. I love you. Hey, for the people out there asking, too, yes, we did get uh, Wrangler their 5,000 shirts back to them. So everybody whose stores were out of uh, Wrangler denim shirts, there's some more in stock now. So thank you, Wrangler. Thank you, Bobcat. Thank you, Bangtail. Those are supposed to go to Boot Barn, by the way, not to Mr. Moore's house. So we got them to back. So wherever there's a Boot Barn, you can find all those shirts that were sitting in my house for so long. There you go. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all next week. Appreciate y'all. All right. See you. See you. Hey, guys. Today's podcast is sponsored by Bobcat Company. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, The book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 31 wrong turns walk with the wise and become wise for companion of fools suffers harm proverbs 13 20 when you're young it's natural to want to fit in with the crowd to go along with the collective will of the people you consider cool peer pressure is relentless and it hurts to be a square peg to be called a chicken or adult spoils all the fun I went along with the crowd when I was young, skipping school, sneaking cigarettes and such. But when I threw a handful of rocks through the window of William Hooper Elementary School in Wilmington, North Carolina, one summer afternoon, 
and a city policeman came to see me about it. I realized that I could get into that kind of trouble that could land me in detention. That scared the daylights out of me. It was a good lesson to learn. I thought I'd gotten away with breaking out the windows. I didn't think anybody who would snitch on me had seen it. And, I, and just to be truthful, at that age, I couldn't see it uh, being a big deal. After all, it was just a broken panes of glass in that school that was closed down for the summer. But the visit from the police officer was a real eye-opener. There he was, in uniform, asking me questions about what I'd done. Without batting an eye, I came clean. Lying never even crossed my mind, although I didn't know what owning up to it would get me into. Like most boys that age, I was terrified for reformer, reformatory school, as they called it in those days. But putting a good scare into me was probably all the policeman intended to do. And if that was the case, he achieved his goal. Although I can't claim that I've lived a completely mischief-free life from then on, I avoided the weightier stuff like the plague. When the crowd I was with headed in that direction, I went my own way. Going along with the crowd may lead to places you don't want to go. Let's all make the day count.